ladies and gentlemen. Looks like we made it. Oh, okay. Yeah, right there. All right. Uh, the world is still here. You know, there were really some crackpots that thought the world was going to end yesterday, just like it ended in 2017. You know, you know, I was wondering how many people across the country, like, really damaged their eyesight yesterday. That's that's what I want to know. I mean, so much time was spent. Don't look. Don't look without glasses. Don't. Who really did that? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How many people? Can we get a list of people that damaged their eyes or who went blind? You know, I've got a. I got a list, and we'll get to this later on. I got a list of folks that uh, historically uh, dealt with eclipses the wrong way and uh, had major eye damage or blindness. So, like what? Can you well, cut? D- d- hey, hang on, just don't. don't I, I don't have time to get into it here. Okay. But later on during the show, the list of people over time okay. through history that uh, did not heed the eclipse eye safety warnings, okay? Can we call Dr. Chuck today? Sure. And ask in his decorated career of eye doctorhood, what is he, an op- ophthalmic surgeon? Optometry's an optometrist? No, no, say, say the no. first thing again. Ophthalmic? Oh, Optimal? That's right. Optimalic. <laughs> Optim- he's an optometrist. No. Uh, no, he's not. He's an, like an eye surgeon. He's not an optometrist. He's an ophthalmologist. Hold on, say that again. Ophthalmologist. Well, a- ophthalmologist. He's oh, an, sorry. An op- uh, op- op- ophthalmologist. No, I, no I'm, not, I'm not sounding like Daffy Duck over here. I'm not going, hey, suffering fuck a tag. I'm not saying, it's an ophthalmologist. Dr. Chuck is... Probably the one of the greatest eye doctors in the history of mankind. Wow. Yes. Oh, hands down. Hands down. Yeah, yeah. He invented ophthalmology. Right, maybe not yeah. that much. But in his decorated career, I wonder if he had anybody who ever came to him with eclipse-related damage. Well, you know what's funny? Yesterday I saw some stupid clickbait. You looked at the eclipse. Now what? Like, <laughs> like, and then I started thinking to myself, well, shoot, I don't even know. I, I thought it said it immediately. I thought it was like, you looked like, you're blind. Yes. But I, I guess it's like delayed reaction. It, I don't know. It's funny you brought that up because Michelle, my lovely wife. And by the way, I, I got to address something with Michelle a little later on during the program. I probably I saw you commented on it. It's just you can't do nothing no, authentically. No, no, you no, can't do no, anything. No, you do no, nothing. no. You can't do nothing authentic. No. Well, thank you. I, I, I love the fantastic grammar and English on this it's show. True. Nothing yeah. you can't not no, do. All right, will you stop it? Right, I'll get into that later on. Let me make a note on that. But Michelle also made the suggestion that we call Chuck, the ophthalmologist. Yesterday oh. to kind of get some. Oh, she thought about it before you. Some pre-eclipse. No, no, no. Fester's talking about after the eclipse. Let's talk to Doctor Chuck uh, about any historical uh, career observations or any patients that he's had that have had eye damage due to the eclipse. So tell you what, I'll send doc- during the break. We'll take a break here. You know, our first break's coming up. So during the break, I'll send uh, Dr. Chuck a note. Hey, when can we call you about uh, eye issues and eclipses and uh, things you've dealt with over your career? So we'll do that coming up in just a bit. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was working yesterday when it was going on and I forgot. Yep. And then Kim called me. She's like, look at the eclipse. And I was like, all right. And I went out and looked at it and I saw my neighbor with their kid out. And he had on like a mask, like a like a welder's mask. Yeah, he was wearing a welder's <laughs> mask. Yeah, hey, we talked about that. But is that bad? Because I was oh, laughing well, at him. Hang on a minute. Were you here during yesterday's show? <laughs> yeah, but I forgot. You know, no, me. you were probably writing up shelving orders and not paying attention to the show. You My were, ADD you, kicks you were, in. You were probably writing up three of the twenty six thirty nine dash fours. Probably, and, oh yeah, yeah. thirty nine dash fours, yeah, and, and seven of the twelve sixty eight. Dash seven. Dash seven. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you probably. No. Okay. Yeah. I guess we did talk. I think I do remember us yeah. bringing that up. Probably so, outfitting some uh, mom and pop hardware store in in the, I don't know Duluth or something. I don't. <laughs> Only know. big franchises. Only yeah. big. Oh, big I'm I'm sorry. And like, do it best. Yeah. Whatever. Every one of them. Dude, it came up on the show yesterday. Yeah, I think I remember that. I had. 
Oh, really? And when was it? When was it, it was during the show? It was between 6 and 10? No, it was not. Well, no. Come on. Get... Mm, 7.30? No. 8? No. 8.30? Well, getting a little... No. Oh, during the Dennis Phillips segment. <laughs> D- Dennis. Well, look it at was... the spelling and you tell me wrong. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm in... <laughs> You tell uh, me wrong. Uh, yeah, you tell me wrong. Uh, well, well, at least you realize that we had Dennis Phillips on the show yesterday. Dennis, it's Phillips. not, it's not Dennis. Uh, look at the spelling. It's Dennis. It's Dennis. All right. It's Dennis Phillips. He'll the- always be Dennis to me. <laughs> It's, it's it's Dennis D E N. Well, then throw in another well, right. So, <laughs> Froggy doesn't like that Dennis Phillips, our good buddy from ABC Action News, the chief meteorologist. Uh, Froggy doesn't like the fact that he spells Dennis with one N. So Froggy refuses to call him Dennis. Well, Froggy mind will it. Call, Froggy only calls him Dennis. That's right, Dennis Phillips. Is that right? He's the man. Yes. Love you, Dennis. Yeah, so, uh, Pat, I'd like to buy an N. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Please. Uh, but, yeah, I remember. So, I guess, the yeah, the face masks aren't good. We had that during the segment when yeah. we had Dennis Phillips on a little after 8 o'clock yesterday. Mm-hmm. We even mentioned, I had a story, are welding masks safe for the eclipse? And the answer is no, that the welding masks technically are not strong enough as far as the uh, uh, opaque nature of the lens. Good, because that can yeah. be punk anyway. And I even mentioned that we had a listener that claimed that they went to Home Depot and all the welder's masks were sold out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it also... Yeah, it's like Black Friday for welder's did masks. Did you see, like, 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 after the fact, there was like a recall on Chinese glasses? You know, I'm sorry. I, I'm not buying any eclipse glasses that have printed on them "Made in China." You know, there are plenty of U.S. made, uh, approved. You know, the ISO 12. There was a whole, you know, the ISO uh, standard. Anyway, just getting rolling. 607. It looks like we made it. Looks like we made it. Oh yeah. Now I'm only falling apart. Oh yeah. Nothing I can do. A total eclipse of the heart. Sun. Okay, but but not here. We only we only had a partial eclipse of the heart here. Or uh, that was Bonnie Tyler, the original. Do you uh, prefer the Nikki French techno version or or dance version maybe? Uh, which one you like better? This one. Yeah. No, I like the other one better. Me too. Now I'm only falling that's, apart. That, that's Bonnie right here. There's nothing I can do. A total eclipse of the heart. Am I going to get our show pulled off YouTube today because yeah. I played a couple of seconds of a total eclipse of the heart? Yeah, All right, 608, just getting rolling. Back in a minute. MJ Morning Show, Jammed Up Tuesday Show. Pat's got traffic. Still a good ride if you get...
in this room that apparently has a little eclipse story, or they think that the eclipse caused something. We will explain coming up here on the MJ Morning Show a little later on. Man, I tell you, this really sucks. I oh, and uh, UConn. That, that's not what sucks. I, listen, I don't, I don't care. I, you know, I was trying to figure out. You know, who do I want to win last night? You know, you had the uh, NCAA, the Men's Basketball Championship, you know, the March Madness, Final Four, championship game last night. And, you know, who was I pulling for? You know, uh, Fester, my little uh, collection of friends from high school where we've all kind of reconnected over the last uh, yeah two three years yeah. and we've got a text chain going the pot, all pot smoking yeah, friends the, pot, the potheads pack. yeah <laughs> all, all, all my pot smoking friends yeah. i mean folks if you never heard about this hey peeps hey mj morning show listeners yeah so all of my friends from high school and they're all you know, a professional. They all have great jobs. They've had great careers and families and kids and everything. And of the five in our group, it is me, Doug, Mike, Kyle, and Alvin. Alvin! 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 Uh, of all of the individuals in our little group here, so five, I am the only non-pot smoker in the entire group. They're all doobing it up, man. They're all bonging it. They're all hitting it. <laughs> Are they bonging it? Is that what they're doing? <laughs> Whatever. I yeah. They're they're all uh, they're all pot smokers. I think oh, edibles, smoking pot. Oh, they're rolling with the eddies. They're they're all. Is that what it's called? Rolling with the eddies. That's what I call it. Yeah, tell you what, you get some kids that are rolling in the eddies when some uh, edibles accidentally get mixed up in the Halloween oh, candy. That's just irresponsible. Yeah, you got to worry about that crap. Anyway, where was I? Oh, so uh, oh, you you had to bring up my pot smoking friends. Yeah, right? yeah, they yeah. probably do excursions and activities without you because you're the only square in the group. <laughs> well, you are a square, man. <laughs> well, listen, here's the deal. You've got uh, Mike lives in Arizona. Kyle lives in the middle of freaking Maine. Alvin lives in Virginia Beach. What okay. about Simon and Theodore? Doug lives in <laughs> Richmond. <laughs> they live together. <laughs> and I live in Florida. So we're kind of kind of scattered. You got two that are still in Virginia. Only one that's in our hometown of Virginia Beach still. I, 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 I don't know that I needed the whole family lineage of your friends. Oh, wait, 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 really? I mean, yeah, well, sure. It's nice you, to know. Is it? Lose in Tampa. You, you, you're going to be ornery right off the bat here this morning? Wait, Froggy has a friend, uh, Brian. Who, yeah, he's in Tampa. Who lives, uh, he lives in Brandon. You have a friend, Lou, who lives in Tampa. In, in Tampa. I, my buddy Sal lives in Tampa. Yeah. Uh, so How li- about your friends? Li- my friend Mike lives in St. Pete. Uh-huh. I, uh, my, uh, can, can I finish the damn friend, story? Brian lives in Tampa Palm. Roxanne, what are your friends? Um, Kettle lives in Miami, of course. Well, you stop yeah. with the she's, Kettle crap she's already. From, well, because Kettle is from. Stop with the. Her the, name is Kettle. 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 See what she did? She's she did? from Columbia. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so can I make my point on the whole? Whatever the hell the point was. UConn beat Purdue, and in my friend text chain last night of the whole high school gang from Cox High School in Virginia Beach, and we had uh, we had a couple of Bayside stragglers. So we had a couple of friends from Bayside. I went to Cox High School, so it was three of us from Cox, and. Uh, on the text chain last night, it was like, hey, who who are you pulling for? Who do you want to win the championship game, NCAA, last night? And I kind of weighed in uh, a little bit here, and this is what I said. Yeah, probably hmm. the, the biggest sports fan of the group. Yeah, exactly. I said, hmm, mm-hmm. who do I pick? Well, you got Connecticut, right, UConn, and then you have Purdue, which is from Roxanne. Uh, Purdue Boilermakers. Yeah, from where? Indiana. Yeah, very good. Wow, nice. uh, Excellent. All right, so here's the deal. This is how I figured out who I want to win, because I I really don't care. I mean, I don't do brackets. uh, The whole March Madness thing, it doesn't, you know, I don't care. Uh, So this is what I said. Who do I pick? Now, this is exactly what I wrote in the text chain. Hmm, who do I pick? I love New Haven, Connecticut pizza and, uh, like, you know, uh, (laughs) Frank uh, Peppy. Uh, you know, Sally Beats. You got modern. 
What are you doing? Why, why, <laughs> why, dude, why are you pushing your mic aside? I'm, I'm just. I'm, you know what? You ordinary I'm, I'm, crotchety. No, listen, if crap you're, bag. You're, so I'm just trying to figure this out. All right. So I like Connecticut pizza. I, I love the New Haven pies. You've got, of course, Colony Grill, which is at a Stamford, Connecticut, with two locations in Tampa Bay, one at Midtown, one in downtown St. Pete. Great. Will you look at me? What What's the Connecticut pizza where they put the uh, clams on it? Ooh. Oh, that's the white clam pizza. Oh, that's good. So uh, that's uh, Frank Pepe. Frank Pepe, yeah. yeah. But, but no, don't say Pepe. It's Pepe. Okay, Frank, Frank, Pepe, Pepe, Frank, Frank Pepe. 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 All right. So, uh, and then uh, Sally, Sally uh, Beats, they do it as well. Especially you okay? Right. So, here's the deal. I'm trying to figure out who, so who do I want to win? And this is what I said. I said, well, I like the Connecticut uh, pizza pies. Um, I love chicken. You know, when you think of Purdue, you think of chicken. Even oh, though who doesn't love even chicken? Even though I don't think it has anything to do with that. No Purdue. relation. No relation no at relation. all. But here's what I said. So, who do I pick? I love Connecticut pizza. I love chicken. But Doug works for Tyson, not Purdue. Oh. And that's true. My buddy Doug works for Tyson. Now, is this the same Doug on the on the text chain with you guys? Yeah, yes, that's what I'm talking about. I, I don't know. You yeah, might Doug. know more than know. No, no, I, I didn't no, know if that Doug no, was no, the, was the no, friend I'm, Doug. I'm, I'm talking about, if I'm on the text chain, I'm talking about my friend Doug. I know, but I've heard you talk about your friend Doug who, who sends you guys chicken nuggets or yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, that, that's the Doug. Doug that works for Tyson that would have overnighted like 30 pounds of Tyson chicken nuggets Sent to Julian at boarding school. That that's the Doug from Tyson. So that's why I went with uh, UConn because of the Connecticut pizza and the fact that Doug works for Tyson and not Purdue when, actually, it, when it comes to chicken. It's even spelt differently. It's what? It's spelt. Yep, <laughs> spelt differently. Sp- <laughs> Purdue and Purdue, two totally different words. How is that? Well, it's P E R D U E is the chicken. Okay. And P U R D U E is the university. Well, there you go. Yes. Didn't even realize no that. No relation. I did, 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 didn't even realize that. So I don't even know what the score was. I kind of fell. I fell asleep. I took a nap toward the end. So what, what was the final score? Can you 75 bring that? to 60. It was? Mm-hmm. Oh, so uh, yeah, you kind of just routed them. And did you, you see the size of that uh, giant Chinese guy? I didn't watch any of it. Yeah. Oh. So there were two seven foot players, one on each team. And yeah. Purdue has like. The giant Asian looking guy. Well, no, he's he's like a half Taiwanese. Yes. He's like, I mean, how the, Michelle even said, how the hell do you get a seven foot four Taiwanese guy? It's like, what the, and then. Remember uh, Yao Ming? Well, well, well that's he true. He was like seven nine or something. <laughs> well, well, the deal is apparently uh, the, what, what's the guy's name? Uh, Edie? E- I, I would be lying if I Zach, told you. Zach Edie, is it E D E Y? Yeah, there. Yeah, sure. Is it Edie? So the dude, he's from Canada. He's seven four, I thought. Yeah, so it's like seven three, seven four, and the deal is that his mother is Taiwanese, and his mom is six three. So how the hell do you get a six wow. foot three inch Taiwanese lady? How does that happen? I mean, it's she's funny that when like, they show him in the stands, his dad's all little and his mom's a giant. Well, hold on. Is that true? Yeah. Because the dad is white. So the mom is Taiwanese and the dad is white. And you're saying the 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 dad's little? Yeah, because I couldn't figure it out because I was watching it. And I'm like, why is he so big when they showed his parents? And then his mom stood up and I was like, oh. Well, hold on. Is the mom taller than the dad? Yes. Like, like, like Michelle's taller than me? Yes. So here's to, a picture. What I saw. Of, here's a picture of he and his mother. Yeah, and his mother. If he's seven four, then oh. his mother's all of oh. six two. Oh, ma- no, mom is six three. I just said. Oh, six don't, three. Don't, don't chop an inch off her. <laughs> all right. And then, uh, uh, dad, you said is like shorty Shane. Yeah, he's like three foot one. I think. <laughs> he's, uh, he's like congratulations, son. <laughs> he did, Cowboy, that's my moral. We're he, super he, proud. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't say that. Whoa. Anyway, so you cut. Was that what back to back for them or? So it, if you care, it's the first back-to-back NCAA win for the basketball thingamajigger since the University of Florida did. Right, and did anyone get the brackets right, or were all the brackets busted early on? Like you know, people are like all pissed off. Oh, my brackets busted! I you know, I could give a flying crap. I think like almost all the back brackets were busted after like the first two days. All right, all right, six thirty-one at the MJ Morning Show. So congrats to UConn. I'm happy because I'm a big Connecticut pizza fan. All right, six thirty-one at the that's that's my barometer, baby. Six thirty-one. Let's do early morons in the nude.
next. That's right, morons in the nude. I'm going to do the moron stories. I'm going to take my clothes off. What do you think? Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. All right, so, hey, let's talk about some of our great sponsors.
That music can mean just one thing. Yeah, at 6.40, it is time for the early morons in the news here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Oh, also, don't forget the Cash Kitty is on the way at 8 o'clock this morning. So don't forget, 8 o'clock, we'll give you the next keyword, which you can text or enter online or on the app, and you could be the next $1,000 winner with our... uh, Beasley Media Group uh, national contest that we're doing here. This is going on for weeks. So uh, your chance to play at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon. What the hell is on my hand here? Ew. I don't know. I got some kind of mung. Uh, what I say? Uh, 8 a.m. So we've got the 8 a.m. coming up during the MJ Morning Show. It's an hour and 20 minutes away. And then we've got 10 a.m. right after the show. And then noon, and then 3 and 5 p.m., it's the Cash Kitty. Wow! Here on the MJ Morning Show. Early morons in the news on the MJ Morning Show is as follows. First, let's start off with a total local imbitard here. Gulfport woman accused of driving drunk with her four-year-old in the car after smashing through an I-275 construction zone. Sounds like, remember Nancy? Oh, boy. Remember? Boy. <laughs> How did I know that was going to come up? As soon as you said construction zone yeah. on the interstate, I knew and, where we were going. And 275. Yeah. I just blow right through those bobs. Hey, she already hates me. What the? What? All right. So uh, here's 
I mean, how can I ignore it? I mean, mugshot on the rail of the Tampa Tribune all those years ago. Unignorable. Yeah, I, you couldn't. How do I ignore that? All right. So here's the deal: a Gulfport woman accused of driving drunk with a four-year-old in her car after troopers said that she crashed in a construction zone on 275, according to this uh, Channel 8 report. Florida Highway Patrol troopers said they were working in a construction zone on I-275 southbound near mile marker 20. Can you tell me where that is? Where, where is mile marker 20? It's oh. right after 19. All right, Frog, you don't have to be a wise Before ass Before 21? Yeah, so thanks. on uh, on 275, where's mile marker 20? Is it, well, which, mile marker 1 is in Parrish, where Interstate 275 starts. And then 275 goes over the Skyway Bridge. Yeah. And so mile marker 20 would probably be either close to downtown St. Pete or close but by Fort DeSoto area. Or you think so? Yeah. So oh. Southern Pinellas County would be my guess. guesstimate. Okay. All right. So you're talking that uh, the 275 mar- mile marker one is in, in the no man's land uh, north of Bierce, right? No. Where? Hmm. Oh, you, oh, oh, you, oh, you're talking about Parish. Oh, so down, down in Manatee, the no man's land in Manatee no, County. No, that's uh, hold on. Are you sure that it starts? It starts there because my exit Bears is like 56. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So we got to get this right, guys. Th- th- down in Parish. Okay. Why did I think that? All right. Anyway, so this drunk lady. Exit 17 is the Pinellas Bayway. Does nice. that help? Oh, so- you know what? Oh, you know what? Um, some years ago. Remember the exit number on the interstates, the exit numbers never corresponded with the mile markers. Right. And then exactly. some like road genius some years ago said, hey, why don't the mile markers and the exits kind of align, right? Uh, yes, that's what they said. Uh, on a lot of it, I don't know if it's every interstate across the country, but a lot of the interstates, there's an alignment of the mile marker and the exit number. Uh, look at this. We're like we're like uh, earning while we're learning right here live on the fly. I, uh, yeah, I used to work yeah. uh, an internship at F dot. So yeah, okay. Troopers say they conducted a traffic stop okay. on this driver after they said they were working in a construction zone. This is mile marker twenty. This is about nine forty p.m. on Sunday when they saw a heavily damaged black car riding on its right front rim. Don't you love those videos where people? are just tooling down the interstate and sparks are <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> and they're like, have you seen some of the videos where like the entire wheel is gone and they're riding on axle? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some video. There's a lady, like some blonde middle-aged lady, and I don't even know where the hell it was, but people are trying to stop her and the lady is like on another planet and the whole front right wheel is gone, and she's just driving down the road like nothing's wrong. No. Sparks are flying all over the place. We saw that. Gouging the pavement mm-hmm. everywhere, you know? Guys, I'm so excited. I'm honing in on this exit 20. I've narrowed it down. Yeah. So exit 19 is yeah. 22nd Avenue South. Okay. Okay? Exit 23 is the TROP. So ah, somewhere between okay. there. Gotcha. Right. This isn't that big of a secret. It's it's 31st <laughs> Avenue or 31st Street South. There we go. Uh, okay. So, you so, solved it. It's not a secret. You solved the mystery, it's, Fester. It's actually a major highway in the Fester area. Fester found the exact spot. Look at that. So FHP, they stopped this woman. It's not a mystery. 46-year-old <laughs> Kelly Ann Gruninger. Gruin. Uh, uh, Gruin. Gruinger. Yeah, Gruinger. According to the FHP, she had slurred speech, bloodshot, watery eyes, reeked of alcohol. She refused to complete the field sobriety tests. Yeah, they later learned that she had crashed into a speed radar trailer. Mm. You know the you know those radar trailers that they'll put in work zones, and it's like. Your speed, yeah. and, uh-huh. you know, she apparently just obliterated one of those. She took one of those out, bashed the living crap out of that. Officials said she didn't report that crash to law enforcement, just kept going. Left the trailer, I guess. <laughs> the tra- it's, not, it's not funny, I'm just sorry. Just debris everywhere. The, the speed trailer, 
you know, it's that device that shows you your speed. She obliterated that thing, left it in a tangled mess on the side of the interstate after she had plowed into it. And then we find out that, what's her name, Kelly Ann Gruinger, that she had a four-year-old child in the back seat of the car. Come on, anyway, Kelly Gruinger. That's, that's, come on, that's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. It's terrible. It is absolutely terrible. Uh, this you want to hear? You want to hear something else that's terrible here in Florida? Yes. Our knowledge of where Interstate 275 looks like. Who the hell is going to make fun of a a Down syndrome guest at Disney? Yeah. Who the hell is going to? I mean, this is awful. That is pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. A terrible situation. A uh, fight ensued. You got a a Florida guy who. Uh, was taken to jail after an argument at a uh, bar at Disney. Which one? Uh, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, Brent George, 61 years old. He was cuffed and stuffed. He was arrested, and he was whacked with four counts of battery. This all took down, took place at the Bellevue Lounge. Mm -hmm. And this is inside the Disney Boardwalk Inn. Now, Andrew, our producer, knows everything Disney because he's a, an adult Disney weirdo. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, do you know where the Disney Boardwalk Inn is and the Bellevue Lounge? Have you uh, you gotten tanked in there before? I have not over-consumed alcohol there. That's over at uh, uh, Boardwalk Resort. And where wow. is that? Is that near... Uh, That's Boardwalk. It's between that near... Studios and Epcot. Okay. Oh, well, there you go. That... we got to give him a, a real Disney quiz sometimes and really test his knowledge. Yeah. Uh, according hmm. to the police report from the Orange County Sheriff's Office, he had become intoxicated, this uh, George guy. He had three shots of bourbon. He had beer. I didn't think he could drink there. And then... Like, no, 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 oh, no. This is the Boardwalk. Hotel. Oh, the oh, hotel. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, no, listen. In Disney, you can. Well, Epcot, oh, you really? can drink. And wh what There's about alcohol in every park? So There's alcohol the, everywhere. The Disney. Magic Kingdom really? now does have. When did uh, alcohol enter the Magic Kingdom? Do you know what that is, Mister Disney over there? It was several years ago. I couldn't tell you exactly when. I haven't been in a while. Not soon enough or recent enough. <laughs> Michael well, Eisner. Well, here's the deal. This this drunk dude. You got the uh, George here, uh, Brent George. He walks over while drunk to a table of other guests. There were four people, I guess, at some other table. And he went to the guest table and didn't remember exactly what he said because he was intoxicated. He said he was having a great time. And then the four guests attacked him. But according to the police report, <laughs> This guy, Brent George, started to make fun of one of the guest daughters who has Down syndrome. Oh, he that, deserved to get his ass that's, kicked. That's an ass beating mm -hmm. right there, let me tell you. Who did? Oh, uh, he was so hammered, but was he arrested by police police? <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> 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 or was he arrested by Disney police? No, he was arrested by Orange County uh, hey, deputies. Hey, put your hands in the air. Uh, Orange County deputies. Hey, don't arrest, you son of a bitch. Put your hands up. Uh, yeah, they arrested the guy. Yeah, Mickey? So that's a more. How dare you make fun of? Uh, I mean, listen, I, the guy was drunk, and I'm sorry. It's no, it's no, no excuse. I mean, that's what's in your well, heart. Well, that's what he's saying. But I mean, because you got to have something in you, even if you're drunk. They say the truth comes out when you're drunk. Yeah, so that's just terrible to make fun of a a Down syndrome girl at another table and then say, "Oh, I was drunk. I don't remember anything." Blah blah blah. Anyway, that's why we call it morons in the news. Here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Hey, uh, 7 o'clock hour starts next, and we're loaded. We are absolutely sleep. You don't want to miss one moment. If you're heading into work now, you got to take us into work. Listen to us on your phone. We're on all the apps. We're streaming on your phone. Just uh, search uh, Q105 Tampa Bay. You can uh, go to mjmorningshow.com, upper right-hand corner. You'll see the red Listen Live button. Listen on your computer speakers. Or just uh, regular radio, 104.7 FM. Uh, 7 o'clock hour is jammed, and it is next. A couple of our great sponsors here on the MJ Morning Show.
7.05. It's 7.03. Hello, I am MJ. I got Fester over here. I got Froggy over there. I've got Roxanne over there. You can see us all on MJTV. MJTV every morning. Just watch us. Just watch us now. That was an old uh, NBC, right? Uh, I'm trying to think yeah, of the old. Sure. N- I'm trying to think of the old NBC jingles when I was a kid. You know, NBC. You know, I've got some of those old uh, little nostalgic pieces. I don't know if I have the "Just Watch Us Now." I probably ought to get that one. But you can just watch us now on uh, on MJTV. Yeah. So you know the the old NBC things when I was a kid. Yeah. Here we go. Here's uh, here's an example here. Oh no! You know what? I think that this is it. This is the NBC Television Network. No, you know, you know what? But that that's the music for Just Watch Us Now. I don't think I have the sing. Just NBC. Remember, it was like NBC. Let's all be there. Like this is the NBC Television Network. You can NBC there, be there. NBC there, be there. Then you had. This is the NBC Television Network. Yeah, well, hey, maybe this one. This is NBC, the network that swept the Emmys. We're NBC, just watch us now. Ah, oh, there we go, I do it. No. Yeah, there we go. So it's MJTV, just watch us now. Oh, we ought to just steal the jingle at the end. Yeah. NBC doesn't have a claim to that anymore. Oh, yeah, that's in the public domain yeah, now. That person's dead. That's like happy birthday now when right. Pop Goes the Weasel. That's that's all in the public domain. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah, so MJTV, just watch us now. Yeah, you go to MJMorningShow.com, and you click on MJTV on the top, and just watch us now. Just like NBC, like uh, circa 1983, you know? When I was, uh, like 17 years mm. old, you know? <laughs> All right, 7.05 at the MJ Morning Show. Dude, this is Fast. Uh, Roxanne, you were doing whatever the hell you do in your, during career. So you weren't even part of this conversation. Uh, Froggy, I don't know where you did. Well, I do know. You go to Token. It's show. Excuse me. You that's to, conjecture. You go to Wake and Bake. I don't know. Wake and Bake. You're yeah. such a. Look, He's going to wake for an hour and a half. All right. So Please. Fester just brought this to my attention. This is, I'm sorry, this is too soon. I was in here for this discussion. What are you talking oh, about? What was the discussion about? Uh, about the L O T T O. What are you spelling a curse word that you want your kids to figure out? Right. Yeah, the lottery. Oh, you were in the room? (laughs) Yeah, I was in the room for the first part of this discussion. Uh, I think I I was during a commercial. I was like, you're not going to believe this. Somebody already came forward. Yeah, Fester just uh, made me aware, and this must have happened early this morning. Uh, Oh, look at the S. It did. This was posted at 5.54 this morning, so I'm in the last minutes of scrambling to get this show ready. This uh, was posted six minutes before the showtime start today for us at 6 a.m. Person comes forward to claim $1.3 billion jackpot from Powerball on Saturday night, of which I missed. But you know what? I might have had the winning ticket, but we were at dinner enjoying a great, great dinner, and we we were there too late, and I, I was planning on... You know, getting to the convenience store to get a Powerball ticket for Saturday night, but I ended up with a freaking ticket for last night. I don't even was there a winner for the twenty million dollar BS jackpot last night? I don't even know. That's what I ended up. I was trying to get a Saturday night Powerball ticket, but I showed up at ten thirty five and I was too late or ten twenty nine, whatever it was. Yeah, so I ended up with a Powerball ticket for last night, and of course the jackpot was won on Saturday night. Uh, after a three-hour delay, and you had all kinds of folks thinking that there was some kind of a conspiracy, and the the eclipse caused the delay, and the eclipse didn't even happen yet, and people, oh, it's all rigged. No, it wasn't. There was some some state in the verification process; their computer glitched up or something. I don't, you know, before and and people don't know this, but before they draw Powerball, with all of the states involved, there's some type of a a check and balance system where there's some kind of a computer verification uh, to verify that all the data is correct for all the states before the drawing happens in Tallahassee. But here's the deal. And so one state had a problem, and that's why there was a, a three-hour delay on the Powerball drawing. 
on Saturday night, which the drawing happened early Sunday morning because it was three hours late. But this is ridiculous. Portland, Oregon, a person with a ticket matching all six Powerball numbers in Saturday's $1.3 billion jackpot came forward Monday to claim the prize. I'm going to tell you right now, this person's a moron. Yeah. This person is a total schmuck on wheels. You don't come for you don't win one point three billion dollars and come forward the first business day after the set. Uh, seriously, <laughs> I'm gonna be there when they open. You gotta get with a lawyer, an estate planner, tax planner. You've got to figure out privacy concerns. You know, put everything in an LLC. I don't know, Fessa. Were you able to look up the states where you can remain anonymous? Uh, Oregon is. Not one of those states. Uh, according to state law, players in Oregon, with few exceptions, cannot remain anonymous. All right, so they cannot remain anonymous. And that's another thing. You are a total moron if you are in a state where you can remain anonymous and you don't. If, Like here in Florida, if you win $250,000 or more, you can remain anonymous. For only like 90 days or whatever. It's some ridiculous short period of time. Enough time to get out but, of town. But listen, but take whatever time you can, the short period here in Florida that you can remain anonymous. Absolutely. But this Oregon person, go back to the story. Sure. This person has come forward two days. The drawing is early Sunday morning. 24 they, hours. They wake up They wake up Sunday morning and they're like, oh, my God, I won Powerball. And the next day you come forward without contacting a tax professional, lawyers, estate planners, you know, uh, form an LLC so the winnings can be put into an L to try to shield, try to, you know, keep your address. I mean, what is going on here? This person is an amateur idiot. They were excited. Are my words hurtful right now? N- not to us. You know, they don't care because they have all the money now. You know, MJ, you should not use words like moron and idiot. Those words are hurtful. <laughs> yeah. He probably doesn't care. He's probably happy because he uh, has how all do the you money. Know, how do you know it's a he? I, I guess I don't. I, you don't. I just pictured it was a he because what, what, what other are you, what are you moron sex- and idiot you, would what, be? What, yeah, what, what exactly. are you sexist? Only guys are morons what, and idiots, what, what right? Are you, what are you, sexist? <laughs> no, I, I, was, I was thinking more along the lines that uh, what? It's a billion three, so it has to be a man that won? Oh, a woman can't win, Roxanne? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. You know, you're chauvinistic. I'm completely chauvinistic. Yes, yes. you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, the, the lottery ticket was purchased at a plaid pantry convenience store. Uh, Oregon Lottery is working with the person in a process that involves security measures and vetting, and that'll take some time before the winner's announced. So they're trying to vet, make sure that it is the actual winner that's come forward, and then they're going to, what, announce this winner's name, this total idiot that come, <laughs> that's come forward 24 hours after winning? I mean, how could you get any duck in a row? This person doesn't even have a schmuck in a row. No. Well, actually, they do because they, they are the, the schmuck. Is that insane? Wow. It's crazy. Nuts. Who wins $1.3 billion in Powerball, and then they come forward the next freaking day? They have some investment ideas. They have places they want to put it uh, right away. That's uh, absolutely insane. And then, <laughs> then there's another element to Powerball. Edwin Castro. You know, he's the dude that won the one point, uh, what was it, two, two billion. Yeah, the big, big yeah. one in California. And, and, of course, listen, they get a fraction of that. But anyway, the guy's, uh, you know, obviously doing well. But uh, Edwin Castro... Remember, he went on a home buying spree. He bought like a $25 million home in the Hollywood Hills. Then he bought like two other multi million dollar homes, like within driving distance. What? If he gets what? T- tired of one home? Uh, you know, I'm going to sleep down the street in my $8 million home instead of my $25.5 yeah, million dollar home. Fine. Listen to this. With the rains, I guess there was a, a landslide, and the landslide missed Edwin Castro's home by just a tiny bit. So is that like continued luck? The guy was lucky enough to win the Powerball, and then his home was almost, ta- his new $25.5 million home was almost taken out by a landslide, but it missed it. Here, listen to the story. Powerball winner Edwin Castro's West Hollywood mansion 
was narrowly missed by a landslide this week. Aerial, aerial images showed a crumbling hillside buried half a neighboring home in dirt. Next door neighbor's house, like, covered in wow. dirt from a whole hill collapsing in the Hollywood Hills. And he almost had his brand new $25.5 million mansion. Just feet away, it was spared. But it crashed through his neighbor's home. Lucky bum. So is that like just like the luck that he won the Powerball? He was lucky and his, his home wasn't taken out by a landslide? This guy's just living like he's some sort of like Hollywood superstar or something. Mm. Well, he is. He's got all kinds of like fancy cars now, and he's got homes all over the place. It's like Vinny Chase, yeah. Montaraj. Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, golly. He's even got a friend named Turtle now. <laughs> In drama. Yeah, he's drama. Johnny drama. Johnny drama. Like, yeah, Johnny drama. What was that? Uh, Dylan, right? Yeah. Dylan. His, yeah. 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 Anyway, anyway I, I just thought that was like a second stroke of luck that the guy's uh, house wasn't wrecked. It is 714 at the MJ Morning Show. We start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ next. Hey, how would you like to find that after the eclipse that the glasses you have are defective? Don't use them. <laughs> All right, we, we got to get into that coming up in just a bit. Also, uh, the list of people that did go blind looking at eclipses. So we'll get to that list coming up in just a bit. We're going to talk to Dr. Chuck, our very good friend and ophthalmologist, uh, about has he ever treated any eclipse injuries? We got a lot of stuff. You shouldn't be wearing jeans. Oh, a mother. What? Well, hang on. Yeah, you heard me right. You shouldn't be wearing jeans. All right, I will explain in a minute. Hmm. Also, a mother cooks dinner for the family. It was disgusting. You're not going to believe what mom did while cooking dinner. Oh, my God. All, right, all this and a whole lot more next with an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. I haven't even scratched the surface of what's coming up. There's a ton of stuff. Don't miss it. Next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Stand by.
Q105. Uh, greetings, everybody. My name is MJ with Fester and Froggy and Roxanne. 726, and right here, right now, we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ every morning. It's at least an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ every single morning, and it starts right now. Hour and 20 minutes nonstop MJ. All right, where do we begin? Uh, well, first of all, congratulations to UConn, back-to-back -back, uh, men's champion, uh, NCAA. Man, they kind of manhandled Purdue, huh? Uh, I got to be honest, I don't, I don't really give a crap. Uh, you know, I don't do the brackets. I don't do the March Madness thing. You know, but hey, listen, I know a lot of people are into it. But you know, we we didn't talk much about it. But hey, no. I'm, I'm going to mention a hey, big game last night. Uh, millions and millions. I wonder if you think more people watched the men's championship last night than the whole uh, Caitlin thing. You know, with the women. I was about to say the big game was Sunday yeah. when South Carolina beat Iowa. Yeah, yeah. Caitlin Clark. Yeah, uh, that game, her last game. Yeah, you know I. God, how do I say? I should. We discussed this. I shouldn't say that, right? You shouldn't. I should not. There was something I should Just not say. It, you weenie. I should not say it. It's, no, you have. To. I, I think what you. I wasn't here to hear what you said, but if I had to guess, it's the same thing a lot of people say in conversations. It's which was what she's really good. Yeah, yeah. she's an amazing what? talent. I mean, yeah, I what Fester just said. Yeah. No. What are you going to say, right. MJ? No, Just say no, it. No, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it alone. All right. You weenie. I'm going to leave it alone. Fro Froggy, uh, you You're know what? such a pushover little weenie. Just say it. I mean, he is, but. See? He look, should. Look at the opinion he, of you. Well, Listen, he it, should. I don't care. It's not that he's a pushover. He just has a big mouth. He's, he's a less wuss. Adult. You're going to say it. All right. I am. <laughs> I'm going to take calls in a few minutes on the aftermath of the eclipse. So stand by. We'll do that momentarily. Also, we're going to call Dr. Chuck. An expert. In just a matter of minutes. Dr. Chuck, my uh, good friend and uh, well-known uh, ophthalmolic surgeon, Dr. Chuck Slonim, got a couple of questions to ask. Also, do you know the list of people that went blind looking at eclipses in the past? And we actually have... Some that went blind yesterday. So hold on a minute. We'll 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 explain coming up okay. in, in just a matter of moments here. So uh, stand by. Uh, before we get to our uh, eclipse aftermath here on the MJ Morning Show, this is awful. This mother, and I don't have you know uh, I don't know where it happened, but it's it's somewhere here in the United States. And this is a video up on social media. And you know you always question: Was this real? You know, from what I saw, I, I think it sounds real. This mother cooks a family dinner, but made a big mistake. All these amazing ingredients. And mom made one crucial mistake and destroyed the flavor. Of, the meal looked okay, but my God, it didn't taste okay. It's kind of like Roxanne's cooking at her house. What the heck no, do you know about my cooking? You know what you know, you know about my cooking? You never been invited. I'm, I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm joking. Get him. Calm down. I mean, what, she replaced like... Uh, what, just because I make uh, mac and cheese with avocado instead oh, of milk, oh, and just because oh. I make a sauce to dip my chicken nuggets in that's made with peanut butter and jelly mixed oh, together oh like in a, in a spread? All right, stop, stop, stop. All right. <laughs> no, I actually am a good cook yeah, when I want to be. All right. When you want to be. All right. So this mother makes this delicious looking meal for the family, but there was one ingredient that she wrecked the meal. She, at the store, grabbed a bottle of pure Greek olive. Yeah, you know, for the olive oil. Yeah, for the, for the olive oil. Okay. It turns out that pure Greek olive is made by Kores. It's Kores pure Greek olive oil scented shower gel. Oh my god! What an idiot! 
You don't get it on that aisle. Oh, what, you... what 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 are you talking about? Like that's in the bathing, that's in the cosmetics aisle. All right, I, I, but, I see it here yeah. available at oh, Ulta Beauty. Right. You know what? But, I have that. Yeah. I have that. You have this? Yes. I haven't used it yet. Someone gave it to me as a gift, and I have not used it yet because I just keep looking at it and I keep thinking to myself, Am it, I gonna smell like a listen, like a Greek salad? It's uh, it's oh. it says Cora's pure Greek olive. Olive is in big, huge letters. Yes. It has an olive tree. And it, it's a shower gel, but she mistook it for olive oil, cooked this elaborate dinner. Instead of olive oil, she used shower gel. Don't most olive oils come in a glass bottle? That is yeah. definitely a plastic bottle because I, I have it. I'll bring it in. We can do some cooking together in here. Let's, yeah. do, let's do a taste test. <laughs> let's actually, let's hand out samples. Yeah. You know what? At uh, Costco or Sam's Club or BJ's. It's a they- three-in-one nourishing oil for the face, body, and hair <laughs> with extra virgin virgin olive oil yes. infused. Mm-hmm. But this... Sounds delicious. Ca- Cameron Jane, <laughs> I guess, put a video up that her mother made this dinner. She cooked a beautiful meal. She made Tuscan chicken with an amazing-looking sauce, <laughs> except the sauce was made with... Shower gel. Oh my! Can you imagine you take a bite of this thing? You're like, mm. Can you imagine it's all soapy and it? Mm. Oh Pantene. my god, that is unbelievable! Uh, so we're I, trying to eat clean around here, so that's yeah, clean. It's got millions of views online. You think it's a real story, or you think somebody concocted this? I'll or... bring it. I'll bring it in tomorrow, and you can just like w- w- let's look at the bottle oh, together. I'm, I'm looking at the bottle right. Festa no, brought up the picture, but look, in person, I you can know? see if you look at this bottle, I can see where you think that it's olive oil. Yes, it, except it, it looks kind of similar to you know the California olive oil, the, yes. the California brand. Mm-hmm. I like that. That is a really you don't have to go. Uh, f- well, first of all, olive oil. The olive oil industry has been just filled with fraud, rancid oil, fake oils, mixed oils. Uh, you know, there are there are some brands mm-hmm. you can trust, but, you know, the California brand from California, highly rated. All the olive oil experts, that is a highly rated, but I prefer, it's more expensive, but you get the all California. Look, because they have the global blend where they got like olive oil from Argentina, from Spain, from Portugal, from right. the go for the one hundred percent California on the California brand, and that's good olive oil. Anyway, well, if you want but, good body wash, you go with olive, no, olive, olive. I'm bringing it in tomorrow because I want to see. Let's like squirt a dollop of it and see if we would be mistaken. Like, oh, would we really move forward and think like, does it look gloopy? Like gel for your hair and your body or does it look like olive oil that's a good point you should be able to tell the difference between shower gel and olive oil and the scent that will also tell us they have a couple of different bottles that it says both in english and french shower gel olive blossom gel douche the douche gel douche douche. at least she didn't cook with like summer's eve i guess (laughs) yum (laughs) You'd, you'd probably make, be better I, off. You know what? I'd make my salad dressing. <laughs> it's a lot of with, salad dressing. <laughs> Summer's Eve, yeah. That's, that's Sounds funny. like a good marinade. <laughs> you know? Well, hey, yeah, uh, we got Thousand Island. We've got uh. Italian or we got Mass and Gill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Mass and Gill salad dressing tonight. That's what we have. Uh, let me call Chuck Sloanham, our official ophthalmolic surgeon here on the MJ Morning Show. And Fester had a very good question. Fester, I'm going to let you ask the question of Chuck, okay? Because Fester's like, we ought to call Chuck and ask him specifically a particular thing. Hello? Good morning, Dr. Chuck Slonum, ophthalmolic surgeon with a whole bunch of fancy schmancy letters after your name, right? Yeah, a few. Yeah. Uh, what, what What are all the letters after your name? Just MD is the only one that matters to me. Gotcha. There, there you go. But it's a, it's a whole alphabet stew, apparently. Yeah, it is. And yeah. do you pronounce the TH, the ophthalmologist? Like, that's what MJ does. He really overpronounces that TH. No, I don't. Yes, you, you, you do. You, you and Fester said ophthalmologist. And I'm like, no, ophthalmologist. 
MJ's correct. It's Thank you. Uh, of course I am. Oh, he's he, so he, happy. He, he just uh, made his day. Of course I'm right. <laughs> the issue wasn't if he's correct. The, yeah, the question was, do you also over-pronunciate uh, the I, I'm not over-pronouncing overpronou- <laughs> it properly. I'm not Whatever. over-pronouncing it. I'm, I'm, all right, Fester, you have a question for Dr. Chuck in the aftermath of the eclipse. Yes. And then we have a little bad timing story that Fester wants to tell. And then I have the list of all the people that have had issues with eclipses in just a second. Fester, what is your question for Dr. Chuck? So, uh, Dr. Chuck, uh, how are you doing, pal, first of all? I am absolutely living the dream. Great. How are you? Yay. Good. All right. So, in your years of uh, working... Ophthalmology. I wasn't going to go with that word. Okay. In your years <laughs> of working with eyes... Have you seen anybody or have you had any patients come in maybe on an emergency case or a a follow-up case with eye damage that they got from looking at the eclipse at any time? Well, there haven't been that many eclipses, as you know, but uh, I only know of one. I have never treated a solar retinopathy, as it's called, or maculopathy. I have not treated one, but I do know of one just through my colleagues saying, yeah, I had somebody that was staring at, it wasn't during an eclipse, just happened to be uh, staring at a sun and had a, uh, uh, looking up directly at it and ended up with a little blind spot in the middle of their vision. But I've never treated one. Well, that's Fester's question. Fester, you've got an answer. Thank you. And Dr. Chuck, you know, Dr. Chuck while, you, <laughs> while you have you on the phone, listen, listen to this. <laughs> Fester received his eclipse glasses this morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a little what's, late. <laughs> what's, what's so funny about that, Doctor Chuck? I'm glad you're laughing. Uh, all right, so Fester had the glasses shipped here, and they showed up obviously when the mail came in yesterday afternoon, and they were put in his mailbox. First of all, why would you have the eclipse glasses sent here and not to your house? Well, because. When the eclipse, the maximum eclipse was yesterday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's priority shipping, and the estimated date was Friday, 4-5, uh, April the, 5th. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service strikes again. And I thought, hey, we'd have it for the morning show. Froggy and I can yeah. you know, wear the stupid glasses all yeah, day, and yeah. now I have right. a bunch of glasses. I would expect that if you put them in a drawer somewhere, you could save it for maybe 10, 20 years, and... Use them for the next eclipse. Yeah. I right, Listen, yeah. I, I use my 2017 eclipse glasses. So if you look, if you go to my Instagram, folks, uh, a couple of things. If you have not seen my eclipse photos, I took photos with my phone. And I had people saying, hey, what kind of professional camera gear did you use? Nothing. I used my Google Pixel 8 Pro and I took, I had, I had a pair of extra glasses and I cut my glasses and I put the, the the film, the opaque film, I I taped it with blue painter's tape. I taped it to my lens on my camera phone. If you go to my Instagram, folks, go to Certified MJ Radio, you can see I took various uh, time frames of the eclipse progression here in Tampa yesterday. And, you know, we only hit a maximum of 65.6%. But some of the photos are cool. Like I took a photo, uh, let's see, uh, 10 minutes in, I took a photo at uh, 1.53 because the eclipse started at 1.43, 13.53 hours yesterday. I took a photo, Chuck, uh, 10 minutes in, and there's like this little bitty sliver out of the right side. And then uh, I took three others, and the final one is at, at the exact time that we had the most of the sun chopped out by the moon. Uh, that was at 1,534 seconds. So 3 o'clock and 34 seconds, I snapped, and that's the maximum eclipse. And I'll tell you what, I didn't cry or get emotional or anything, but it was really, really cool to look at uh, with the eclipse glasses. You know, my neighbors are in the backyard, and I'm like, hey, you got your eclipse glasses? No, we procrastinated. So I, I said, come to the fence. Uh, and I, I handed my glasses, and both uh, my two neighbors, the husband and wife, they were like, oh, my God, that's amazing. So look at that. I spread I spread some eclipse joy yesterday. You did. Well, I did. <clears throat> unfortunately, I was in surgery until the very last minute, got a chance to look, and it looked like uh, somebody just took a little bite out of a cookie. Oh, so you got, oh. The, you got the end of it. Yeah, I got the end of it. Yeah, yeah but you were doing much more important it, things. It ended at 4.15 yesterday. So, Chuck, before you go, I know you got a meeting coming up. 
Uh, I just wanted to go over the list of uh, well-known individuals that are blind because of, well, eclipse problems. So <laughs> we're, we're so we're we're looking at prior eclipses, and a lot of people don't realize this, but people that went blind by not following instructions and not looking directly at the eclipse without protective equipment. Like people in modern times or people yeah. in ancient oh, well, times? A little, little bit of each. Okay. And I, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Um, most of these are, are fairly current, but some go back, you know, uh, uh, Helen Keller. Helen, Hers was Helen, not eclipse related. Helen Keller looked at it. That's why she was blind. Helen Amanda? Keller. Yeah. Um, Jose Feliciano. Oh, wow. Oh, did you know that? The, he always wore the glasses. Oh, yeah. Jose yeah. Feliciano, blind. Um, uh, Chuck, did you know these? I knew that they had vision problems and they were blind, but I thought they were blind from birth. No, no, all, all, no, all eclipse. eclipse related. All, That's all fake news. news. Hey, all eclipse related. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, hey, the Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Eclipse. Love him. Yep, yep, yep. Those uh, things. The eclipse blew Ray, out his eyeballs. Ray Charles. Yep. Wow. Yep. yep. Ecl- people don't realize this. Ray Charles looked at an eclipse when he was four years old. Let me uh, guess, Stevie Wonder did too? Yes, and you know. Oh, my God, amazing. How did you know Stevie Wonder as Just well? taking a shot. Stevie Wonder was in Michigan when he was a little kid, and he looked at an eclipse. That's why Stevie Wonder is uh, blind. Who else? Oh, Ronnie Millsap. Mm. Ronnie Millsap. Ronnie Millsap. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp? Johnny Depp. He's, he's blind? Uh, No, but he but he has, he has an, an, injury. Yeah, an injury, I think. <laughs> uh, Nancy Pelosi. Wow. Wow. Nancy Pelosi looked at and uh, Rachel Dratch, because formerly her last of, name is C. Pel- uh, or, uh, is Ra- C. Rachel Dratch, formerly of Saturday Night oh, Live. No, Rachel, yeah. mm. my favorite. <laughs> That's why I did. I put that put that on the list. She's just, a just, just, just for you. Uh, no, uh, I suppose uh, I suppose Sammy Davis Jr. only looked with one eye, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's oh, yes. Still a good, Thank good you. Point. Yeah, that one's bad. S- S- Sammy Davis Jr. only covered one eye the while, while, one in the look, group. while mm-hmm. looking at an eclipse back in 1946. All right, but no, all kidding aside, uh, what really kind of prompted me to put this uh, phony list together is that former President John Quincy Adams partially blinded himself. By looking directly at an eclipse in 1791, that that <laughs> really? is, that is true. <laughs> that is a true story. <laughs> that was the son of John Adams, right? Uh, yes. What yeah. an idiot. Yeah, John Quincy Adams. And then, if you remember, Trump looked at the eclipse with no protection in 2017. My <laughs> eyes are too powerful to <laughs> uh, see the sun. Hey, uh, Doctor Chuck, I know you got a 7:45 meeting. Yeah, I do. Okay, and thank you so much for hooking me up with Dr. Reyes. Remember when you did that, however long ago that was, like a year now? I see him every six months, and I'm doing Excellent. great. Thanks I'm to you. I'm glad you got the chance to see him for sure. Yeah. Hey, Absolutely. at, at your meeting today, Dr. Chuck, tell him the John Quincy Adams stuff. I uh, will do that. Yeah, that would be a good I, opener. I did not know that. Yeah, also, uh, Her- Helen Keller, Jose Feliciano, Andrea Bocelli, Ray Charles, uh, Stevie Wonder, Ronnie Millsap, Johnny Depp, Nancy Pelosi, and Rachel Dratch. And Sammy Davis. Yeah. All right. And Sammy, and Sammy, Sammy. Davis Jr. He had the best joke. He did. All, right. All right, Chuck. We'll see you later. All right, MJ. Talk to you later. Right. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah, he's great. Hey, we had uh, dim sum. Uh, had a bunch of friends, uh, Michelle and myself, and then uh, Chuck and his wife and uh, uh, two other friends. We all met for dim sum on Sunday morning over at uh, China Yuan. Did you know dim sum is actually an eye doctor term <laughs> for, for low Turn, vision? Yeah. Low vision. For, so, you oh, dim sum? Oh, so your eyes are dimming <laughs> some, huh? Dim sum. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's uh, macular degeneration <laughs> or something. Yeah. Dim some light in here. Uh, when dimmer, dim sum. Uh, and then uh, just wrapping up on the, you know, we, we ought to go to phones here quickly. You know what? All right, let's go to phones. A few calls on the eclipse. Uh, did you melt your eyeballs? Uh, are you blind because of the eclipse yesterday? Uh, did you get a chance? Did you have the glasses? Oh, oh, did you end up with the recalled glasses? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> they were at the last minute. They're like, don't use these glasses. <laughs> Too late. All right, 800-990-1047. If you would like to talk about the eclipse, did anything weird happen? Did your cell phone not work? My phone worked fine during the eclipse. The world, folks, is still here. Looks like we made it. Oh, you know, you had people that thought that the rapture was going to happen yesterday. 
Did, Seriously. Did animals freak out or anything? Was no. there anything crazy? Like the, no. A herd oh, of elephants did stampede what? through a zoo? Guess what? Chloe wanted to put a pair of the Eclipse glasses on Scout yesterday. I saw that. And she was freaking out over that. Yeah, if you go to my Instagram, I'll give you that in a second. You can see all my Eclipse photos uh, through my special filter on my camera phone. Folks... If you had any eclipse issues yesterday, any observations, anything eclipse related in the aftermath, this is like an after, uh, and this is an intelligence after action briefing. All right. 800 990 1047. That's how you get on. Did you see uh, the eclipse yesterday? Did you follow it? Did you have the glasses? It was cool. It was really, really cool. Of course, we were not in the path of totality. We'll get that in Tampa in 21 years. In August of 2045, we're going to have a total eclipse here. I don't know where the hell I'll be in 21 years. but uh, I, I thought it was rather boring, to be honest. Well, listen. What's so you, cool about well, it? Well, if here, with only 65 to 66 percent, that you know, there was no dimming. No. That's amazing, though. You can you can have that much of the sun obscured by the moon and have absolutely no difference in perceivable sunlight. All right, so what were your thoughts on the eclipse yesterday? 800-990-1047. Did you view it? Did you have a problem? Did you think the world was going to end? Did you think the rapture? Any aspect of the eclipse. We'll grab a couple of calls. 800-990-1047. Did you not care about it and all your coworkers were outside looking at it? Then, you know, hey, any any aspect, 800-990-1047 is how you get in. And I'd love to talk to somebody if you actually ended up with the recalled glasses, which that's got to suck. Yeah, terrible luck. If you purchase glasses on Amazon or in Illinois or Missouri... So a lot of people probably bought these on Amazon. The Illinois Department of Health issued an alert warning that the faulty glasses were recalled after potentially failing to meet safety standards. Yeah. Uh, most of the glasses were sold on Amazon as the Beniki Solar Eclipse Glasses AAS approved 2024 CE and ISO certified. So they had all the, the certifications and they even had they even had labels ISO 12312-1. They even had like the 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 ISO uh classifications on the glasses and then also printed on the glasses made in China. So, you know, maybe you don't buy uh, Chinese eclipse glasses is, is what I'm thinking. But that just is that awful? Yeah. Good job, Illinois, waiting to the last minute to test the glasses. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. well, listen, at least they did. Nobody else did. Yeah, I'd rather have them not test it and never know about it than know, like, five minutes after it's over, uh, by the way, there's a recall. All right, Andrew is screening calls right now, so uh, bring up my phone screener sure. if you'd be so kind. So, you know, and then I love the stories. How to tell if you damaged your eyes by looking at the solar mm. eclipse. Because you can't see. Because you can't see or you got a big giant black blotch, you know, in the middle of oh. your eyeball or something. Yeah. Uh, so, all, yeah, all, all of these uh, stories on solar retinopathy or eclipse blindness are popping out now. Yeah, here's how you can tell if you damaged your eyes during the eclipse. So, all right, let's go to phones on it. We'll grab a couple of calls, then we'll we'll move on. Let's go to. Oh, do oh do we have um? We, did you try to get a hold of yeah, Wacky? She's on. She she called in. Oh oh she did. Oh this oh Wacky Jackie's on the hold. Yeah. All right, and then uh, we'd love to talk to local folks. If you're here in the Tampa Bay area, uh, what was the partial eclipse here like for you? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was absolutely tremendous. And then I think Froggy wants to uh, uh, chastise me for a, a particular photo on my Instagram. I think everybody wants to. You, you know what? It's not what it seems. Mm. Froggy, it's not what it seems. Yeah. I, but I also have my Eclipse photos, which are pretty cool. 
they're all on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. That's Certified MJ Radio. Let's start first though with Wacky Jackie in Ohio. Good morning. <laughs> this is Wacky. It is. It is. Wacky Jackie, formerly of our sales team here in uh, the Tampa market. She uh, told them to take this job and shove it, and she walked out. She moved to Ohio, and it ends up that she's right in the middle of 100% totality yesterday. How were the skies, Wacky Jackie? Did you have cooperating skies? It was absolutely spectacular, I have to say. I wasn't that excited about it, really. I just thought, eh. But it was 70 degrees yesterday. It was absolutely gorgeous, and I'll tell you, at about... 312 it went dark it was the weirdest thing ever it was i mean the, the night lights came on um and you could hear people cheering there i mean we were outside at work and you could, it was like for miles people were cheering and then of course the shooting and setting things off started because it's bfe ohio and whoa, 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 hold on people were shooting guns during the eclipse yes you could hear there were like fireworks going off there were gunshots people you know it was apparently very exciting for a lot of people but it was really cool. They're like a back took off from under the eaves of the building where oh, wow. wow. and it was really neat. Did you see the diamond ring and the beads and everything? The diamond ring and the beads. Yeah, it's what? it's it's, it's mean, well the beads happen around the edge where you get the little like beads of light and then the diamond oh, ring yes, is yes, that yes. is that, that, that happened when I was turning and I had actually taken my glasses off for a second. And then all of a sudden, it got really, really bright. I'm like, oops, I think that's yeah. not Yeah, so no. you had about four minutes. So if you were we in had, yeah. if you were in the total path of Eclipse, you had like yeah. four minutes and 12 seconds in most places where you could take the glasses off and stare directly at the sun obscured and by it, the moon. It's really something. Right. It's really, really something. It's just, you know, the, the, the light on the outside and then just the black dot in the middle. It's really, it was really incredible. Awesome. I, you know, I have to say. Wacky Jack, and thanks for doing the special uh, artwork for the Total Eclipse safety poster that we put up on uh, social media. Thank you. Well, you're so welcome. I promised you that I would still do those for you because, you know, I love you guys. Yeah, Jackie did all our special photoshops for holidays, etc. Thank you, Wacky Jackie. We will talk to you soon. And you want to hear something funny before I go back to phones? So it's a picture of all of us with our Eclipse glasses on. Right. And I posted this over the weekend, and it was like total eclipse, 2024, watch safely. And all of us are looking straight ahead with our glasses on. And then Froggy is tilted, and Froggy has no glasses on. He's looking right at the eclipse. <laughs> I saw that. And, yeah. and as a joke, on uh, the caption, I I put on, uh, hang on, let me, let me find the caption. Uh, the humor's and, everywhere. Uh, you but, are but, just too silly. No, no, but no, that's, that's not what I'm getting at. So I wrote... Don't be a froggy and look directly at the eclipse without proper eye protection. Froggy says glasses are a scam and totally overrated. Idiot. I so I went to post this and Instagram said, are you sure you want to use that language? <laughs> so it, it it tried to dissuade me from using the term idiot because it's a hurtful really? word. And then listen to this. It wouldn't post on Facebook because I put the word idiot. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, ridiculous. Weird. All right, let me go back to uh, phones. Anyway, that if you haven't seen the poster, it's on my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio. All of my Eclipse photos with my camera phone, which look fantastic with my camera phone, with my filter. I just cut a, uh, I cut a spare uh, eyeglass and put it over my camera yeah, lens. You're a regular Eclipse Herb Ritz. Thank yeah, you very much. Ecl oh, Eclipse Herb Ritz. Yeah. All right, it's on my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio. That's Certified MJ Radio. And uh, while you're at it, give me a follow. Let me go back to phones. Uh, oh, Kyle. Oh, our buddy from Temple, Texas. My buddy. Yeah, Kyle in Texas. Kyle, how is totality there? Because Texas was not looking good as far as uh, cooperating weather, but I think it cleared up, right? It did. It was supposed to be 90% cloudiness, but it was cloudy all morning. And we're like, ah, oh, that's not good. And it just ended up clearing out just in time for totality. It was the most beautiful thing ever, watching it get dark in real time. It was really incredible. What was nice was that uh, it wasn't the total town apocalypse that we were supposed to have. <laughs> yeah. Traffic was normal. Yeah. Everything was normal, and it was great. Oh, man, it was fantastic. 
Kyle, thank you very much for calling in from Texas. All right, so we've had two totality, Wacky Jackie and uh, longtime friend of the show, Kyle in Temple, Texas. Thank you, Kyle. Yes, sir. There's new glasses for you that Fester just got today. Yeah, he sent me the glasses. Oh, so you... these are the glasses that. Remember, I told you I had a friend that was an executive at Pizza Hut. Uh, yes, it's Kyle. Oh, it's He's a... like the assistant. So every one of these glasses I have in here yeah. has like a Pizza Hut logo yeah, on. Fester them. got them this morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready for uh, next time. Kyle, have a great day, buddy. buddy. Thanks. All right, let's go local now. Let's go. Oh, this is sweet. Cindy in Lakeland. Cindy, hi. You're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi. Welcome. What's the story, Cindy? Yes, my daughter and her boyfriend are both from Lakeland, and they drove up to Little Rock, Arkansas, and he proposed to her in the middle of the eclipse. And it was a surprise for her, and he even came two days before to ask our permission. Oh, that's nice. So they went to uh, Little, Weird. Little Rock was total eclipse? Yes, yes. Did he play any music like, uh... Now I'm only falling apart. That's right. Yes. I don't think so. No? no. Nothing I can do. Should have played this. A total eclipse of the heart. Exactly. Should have played so, that. Cindy, how irresponsible of your soon-to-be son-in-law is that to distract her during the two-minute window she had to see this once-in-a-lifetime event. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, honey, uh, can you stop looking at this amazing yeah. event and will you marry me? Yeah. How dare you propose in the middle of this <laughs> spectacular uh, astronomical <laughs> event? So always remember it. Yeah, that's true. You I know think what that I means? Think... Next eclipse, divorce time. Uh, we just stop oh, it. No. Cindy, thanks, no. thanks for sharing the story. Thanks, Cindy. You know what, though? I, I was reading some articles yesterday about things you should do and things you shouldn't do during the eclipse. And, like, some cultures think you should fast. You shouldn't do it. Wow. You should meditate. You know, just, like, telling you what you should well, steer clear of. Did you? Didn't you send me an email that you had a, a, a nightmare or something? Yeah, so I... I, I hold yeah. on to that thought. Hey, Roxanne, you napped during the eclipse? I did for so, part of it. Yeah, Roxanne napped during the eclipse and apparently had a nightmare during yeah. the eclipse. So hold on. <laughs> Let me grab Michelle in St. Pete. Hey, Michelle, MJ Morning Show, you're up. Good morning. Morning, Michelle. Go ahead. How are you? We are well. Oh, folks, the cash kitty. It is 7.58. The cash kitty will be here in just a few minutes. Michelle, go ahead. The eclipse was very, very lucky for me last night. Why is it? What, would you get it some? Nope. <laughs> $16,000. What? Hold on. Whoa, 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 hold on. What? Whoa, whoa. what? Yeah, won $16,000. You won $60,000? How'd you win $60,000? One six, sixteen. Sixteen. 16. Okay, how? Hold on. You won $16,000. Yes. In a drawing. It was nice. What drawing? A lottery? Uh, a private drawing kind of thing. What, 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 a, what a pro... Well, how do you win $16,000 in a private drawing? you got to give us more information. Well, you know, certain veterans organizations have certain things that they do to raise money, and that was one of them. Are you talking like a um, VFW having like a 50-50 or something? Yeah, so, yeah, something like that, exactly. Well, that's right. nice. Yeah, congratulations. Fantastic. Allison's in Tampa. Allison, I right, two, two more calls, and we got to move on here. Uh, Allison in Tampa, go ahead. Hey, I work for Lazy Days RV in the corporate office in Brandon. and our uh, Fester's scowling right Ooh. now because Fester works for General RV. That's all right. That's all right. Then you're a that's jetty all, or a jetty. All right. Go, go ahead, Allison. Allison knows what time it is. Our, intermit our internet went intermittent. Um, about just before nine o'clock, and then it was out for a good hour and a half, two hours until about noon, and we were all joking that it was because of the eclipse. It was General RV. Yeah, no. it was. Uh, it was that equity group that you guys sold to didn't pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fester went over and snipped your internet lines. So, MJ, I'll tell you, I was at General RV yesterday, yeah. and. One guy, Kevin, brought a pair of glasses, and we're all sharing his. One guy? One, he's like, hey, y'all, I got these glasses from 2017, and we all were standing yeah. out there like a bunch of morons using his glasses. There's no moron thing about it. It was fantastic. No, I, we were standing out there yeah, like a bunch but, of morons. Uh, Michelle and I were in the backyard, and Froggy wants to address a picture on my Instagram. Dude, everybody uh, wants to address I, a I, picture. Yeah, a, a lot of people have discussed. There's a particular picture that uh, Chloe took of Michelle 
and me lying on a blanket in her backyard looking up. God, you made your daughter take that picture? Uh, No, she just took the picture. Oh, that was just a natural I didn't make her take the picture, but it's not what it seems. Allison, thanks for the call. All right, quickly, Jesus, uh, also in Eagle Pass, Texas. Jesus, were you in 100% totality? Oh, yes, for sure, MJ. And the whole, you can even see to the other side of Mexico where everybody was out there. And we threw like a three-day uh, festival in Eagle Pass out by the casino there. It's fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for checking in. All right, last call. Then we're going to do Cash Kitty. And then uh, Froggy wants to address a picture. Uh, Joy in Lakeland, your door is ajar. Hi. Hey, go ahead, Joy. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out to uh, General RV. My mom also works there. So. Oh, wow, with so many. <laughs> yeah, look at, it's like, yeah. Her mom's like a cleaning. It's lady an or RV something. phone segment. All right, great. Uh, all right, Joy, go uh, ahead. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? <laughs> this is one of your coworkers' children. <laughs> okay, we don't have to shout out What's everybody. What's the matter with you? What's up, Joy? All right, Joy, go ahead. Um, so I looked at the sun with and without glasses and determined that the eclipse was super boring and overrated and a scam amen i mean <laughs> the eclipse was super boring overrated and a scam <laughs> this, is, this is a little like over the top like i mean i looked through my kids glasses and i was and when they got home and i'm like really they're trying to close schools over this yeah there was no reason to close schools here over it but did you have glasses could you see the big chunk taken out of the sun yeah, I mean, it looks like, um, you know, one of those kids' binoculars, fake cameras that you press and it, like, skips through those, like, Oh, I love pictures. those. Like the Viewmaster yeah. or whatever. Joy, yeah, I thought that I was kind of just, you know, being scanned by one of those. Right. But What I don't part know. of this is a scam? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I, mean, I understand that you know, you weren't moved by it. I agree. But it was really boring. <laughs> it was super boring. It, so it was boring. the buying of the glasses. Um, oh, so you think having people buy glasses was a scam? Well, I mean... I, I saw the, I guess, the only way for me to see the eclipse was with the glasses, but it was uh, super bright and uh, no different than any other day here. All right, did you look at the bare sun eclipse with your naked eye without protection? Briefly. All right, well, <laughs> all right, well that's probably not going to hurt you, but you shouldn't do that. Joy, thank you. I'm yeah. sorry that you found, fa- are you going to file a complaint with like a consumer protection agency over the eclipse? For a it being hyped. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, if you find yeah. it's a scam, you get to contact the uh, state attorney general's office and file a formal complaint. Yeah, I already have. Right, very nice. Nice. <laughs> way, I very up. Thank good you. job, Joy. You're pretty funny. Uh, uh, so, le- I love Joy. She's a good person. She's good. <laughs> Joy's a good people. So, uh, MJ, uh, why couldn't like President Biden have just like sent everybody a pair of glasses? How much did they cost? Honestly, oh, oh, like the uh, why couldn't like the, the gov- COVID tests? Yes. Yeah, why couldn't yeah. the government yeah. have sent every <laughs> Every address, two glasses. Uh, I mean, WRBQ and WRBQ HD1 Tampa, yeah. a Beasley Media Group station. Stop talking. Oh, here we go. All right, the Cash Kitty. It's uh, 8.04. You have until 8.15. So you have like 11 minutes to go ahead and text this hour's keyword. The Cash Kitty's on. All right. Remember, we do this at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. This hour's word is blind. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, I'm, no, I'm joking. I'm jo- no, 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 no. All right. This hour's word is gift, G-I-F-T. That's better. Not the multisyllabic word we had yesterday. Yeah, right. yeah. All right. This hour's word is gift, G-I-F-T. That's gift. So text the word gift nationwide to 45911 right now before quarter after 815 for a shot at $1,000 cash. Or you can enter it on the Q105 app or at myq105.com. So good luck. That is the 8 o'clock word for the cash kitty here on the... That thing off me. Cash Kitty here on the MJ Morning Show. All right, Froggy, go ahead. (sighs) Say what you want to say about the pic. You got a problem with the picture of Michelle and me lying down on the blanket in my backyard? Well, I just know how it happened. You were like, 
Michelle, you know how you know it'd be funny. You know it'd be good if you put your hand on my wiener when uh, you're looking uh, at the sun. First of all, and her, then people would be like, "Oh my god, what is this?" Her hand is not on my wiener. Yeah, okay, dude. Right, folks, I've, I've examined no, the picture no, yeah. close it, enough. It, it is an. Opti- Why can't you just take a picture of you it's, and your wife having a good time? She, mm-hmm. ha- she had Everything her hand. Everything has to have a stick. She had her hand on my leg. Her you're hand the king is, of stick. Her hand is not on my wiener. Okay, dude. I, well, I, then I, you I, meant I, for it I, to look I, like. It. I, no, I did not, <laughs> and I didn't even know that it was. I didn't know Chloe was even taking the picture. I yeah, neither did Michelle. And you know what? I didn't when I. I posted this. I didn't even recognize it. Dude, it, it she's is, grabbing your junk. She is not grabbing my junk. And where is it? No, because no, your no. arm is over her arm. No junk grab. No. Explain right. it. If she's not grabbing your junk, then where on your body is your junk? Because <laughs> it is right there. No, it's, That's what I was thinking. It is before. <laughs> it is on my thigh before you get to my junk. All right, folks, take a look at the picture. It's the picture of Michelle and I lying down on this uh, multicolored blanket in our backyard on the grass. We're laying down looking up at the eclipse with our special glasses on. Oh, look, there's Gatsby kind of photobombing uh, right in the back. Yeah. All right. The yeah. picture at question here is on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. Go to my Instagram, Certified MJ Radio. If you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. It is her hand is not on my junk. It is an optical illusion. She is not eclipsing my wiener with her hand. Okay. <laughs> oh man, Michelle's sitting there just laying out in the lawn, wearing her wearing her sexy butch substitute teacher pants. Oh, what are you talking <laughs> yeah. about? Look at her. She's wearing like long. Butch substitute. Yeah, yeah, like what a butch substitute well, teacher some, would wear. She's got some long ass legs though, doesn't she? Oh, yeah. Way longer than yours. Yeah, compared to you. Yeah. I mean. uh, anyway, so uh, take a look at the picture. Uh, and multiple people read the comments. I mean, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of comments. Of course, because that's what you wanted. It's not what I wanted. With your wiener, with your hand. It, it, it is, is put not. Put your hand on my wiener. Her maybe hand, don't put it on it, but it, put it close. She's like on my. Like, What's the point hand? of her doing that? She was just next to me enjoying a husband-wife moment, you. Ugh, what are you guys, so, high schoolers? The I, comments. The it looks pic- like she's embracing the family jewels. I, no, no. She's just making sure that the third eye is protected. Uh, we s- <laughs> Get that's, funny. that's funny. Oh, that's terrible. Michelle is, is good. Michelle is checking you for a hernia. Please stop. Yeah, it's it's exactly what he wanted. It no, it is not froggy. It's very manufactured. It is not manufactured. You all might see a solar erectus. <laughs> oh my gosh. It is a simple uh-huh. It's a it's a a, a simple photo. Mich- Michelle had my hand, her hand on my on my thigh. It is not in my crotch. It is the angle. It's the perspective. It is an illusion. If you uh-huh. think her hand is covering uh, my, uh, tell it to the jury. The comments continue. Multitasking at its finest. <laughs> there are two eclipses happening here: one in the sky and the other in your pants. Are we stop it. <laughs> All right, folks. PDQ, people dedicated to quickies. Oh, stop it. Oh. All right, take a look. Take a look at the photo. It is on my Instagram. It's actually the last item posted. It's on, on Instagram. Go to my account. My private account is Certified MJ Radio. And take a look. You can see that her hand is not in my crotch. It can is, you? It is on my leg, yeah. on my thigh. That's not what it looks like well that's what it is i'm not completely comfortable with froggy calling you p diddy in the comments <laughs> i just wanted to put that out there uh, i mean funny. froggy's comment right. is did you force her to do that mj diddy and that is inappropriate and then, froggy and then, is it and, then, and i have some new diddy stuff later on uh and then roxanne you yes. took a nap during the eclipse. Yeah, and you, you of had a, You had a nightmare, and what was your nightmare about? You were in it. Ah. Uh. Uh, so I was okay. I watched the part of the eclipse, and I was like, "This is great." And then I went in and took a two-hour nap, and I had a, an eclipse nightmare that involved you, MJ. You wanted to take a nap. I was trying to find a place for you to take a nap. I found I found one. So you were lying down. And then my kid came in and she was talking so loud. I'm like, this guy's going to be so mad because my kid's going to wake him up. She did. You woke up and you're like, I'm out of here. I'm going to go find a nice hotel. And then you got on a subway 
And <laughs> the subway, I got on the Whoa. subway here in Tampa. Okay, all right. You're on LSD. And yes. I, I walked you to the subway. What I, what I, was I on the blue line, the red line? Would I take the, I mean, did I take the one, the two, the three? Yeah. Did I take the green, the, the four, five, six? Uh, what, what was I on? The... I don't know, but I escorted you to the subway, and then I left my phone on it. And that was the worst part of the dream. Aside from you whack. taking up all my dream space. But wait a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. You sent me your little narrative. You're yeah. missing a, a big part here. That was a separate dream. Oh, so you The Doug dream was separate. You had two dreams yeah. during? Uh, yeah. how, do, how do you know it was separate? Because it was a completely new scene. It wasn't like there was no yeah. transition. It was just like, boom, right. and scene so ends. So Roxanne's other dream during the eclipse was? It, Doug was... Doug was always sneaking to the Bahamas with someone named Cass, Cassin or Cashin. So, but it was really real. And so then I... You know, first thing you do when you wake up, you call and and he wasn't there. I was like, "Where'd you go? Are you with someone named Cassin?" You wrote. Let me let me read the email. One of the dreams I had during the eclipse is that Doug, I'm talking about Dig Doug, folks. Roxanne is claiming that Dig Doug was cheating on you in the Bahamas with somebody by the name of Cassin. <laughs> Weird name. C a s s i n. Oh yes. Let's do I, I, it. My wife will never believe I have an affair with someone like you. It is another episode of... And Doug. Cassin. 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 Is that even a name? And he was gone. When I woke up, he was he was he disappeared. I was like... In the Bahamas. I, I think I know where you are. Having some eclipse action with Cassin. Mm-hmm. Good night. Yes. yes. And Derek Jeter was watching from the corner. Oh, oh okay. Okay. All, All right. right. All, All right. 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 You get That's started. I'll yeah. back clean up. Ew. Oh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on, we're a morning show, Roxanne. Calm down. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but All you know right. when you get irritated with someone, when, Michelle's done that to you before, right? Where you have a dream and you like you do something bad in the dream and then you pay for it when she wakes I... up. Oh, where you take the G? Yes. Oh, you get angry at somebody because of something that happened, not in reality, but not in, in reality. a dream? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I think over the years of our relationship, yeah, I think that, Michelle's kind of given me a little bit of a toot or uh, maybe a little bit of a you know, cold shoulder because of something that might have been uh, dreamed. Yes. You're screaming out Rachel Maddow's name in a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Sex dream. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I got to see how many comments I have on the uh, Michelle's hand is not on my junk. There are 106 comments now. Holy crap. Well played, my friend. Your little plan See, worked I'm not, out. I'm not playing anything. Hmm? Stop it. Michelle, you fondling me is going viral. <laughs> it's just a, you know, we put, she's Bessie not. puts up pictures of these genuine pictures. We all do genuine pictures. Everything has a little gimmick with you. There's no gimmick. <laughs> the photo is an, is an innocuous photo with her hand mm. lovingly on my leg. It is not on my crotch. All right, speaking of your uh, yes. Insta, Insta stuff here. Yes. What'd you do about the dog yesterday? I meant, to, I, you know what? I got distracted. I meant to call the lady to then uh, get her vet information to make sure. No, you're that fine the, by now. The dog that bit me. You know, uh, the bone is still a little bit sore, but again, the dog bite that I sustained on Saturday, uh, it did not break the skin. It was so close because I had a I had a red indent on my wrist, and it was just so close with that uh, dog's canine tooth. I mean, almost punctured my skin, but it, it did not. Uh, but I, I got to call her up and get the vet information, just you know, just to make sure. My vet suggested that I just confirm that the dog mm-hmm. is up to date on shots. 814 at oh, the end. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Someone just texted me. <laughs> yeah. I'm so thank you for yeah. DMing me and telling me yeah. that Cassin is the code for that Casanova. That's what that meant. The, but the dream name. But it's not so he's banging Casanova <laughs> in the Bahamas. What, wait a minute. It's wow. not Casanova. Casanova's Casa, C A S A. Well, I, Casanova. Like one of my uh, favorite Italian wines is Casanova de Neri. See what you did, Rox? <laughs> the Tenuta Nuova. Referencing an 80 year old movie. You got some a, of the <laughs> got some of the 2006s, which are just spectacular. Oh, those are good. Oh, you took oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And you diverted him to talking about yeah. wine. Right. Or Pastor, Pete's... you are a pill today. No, 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 he's talking you're about a pill. Wine. You are. You're, you're a, pill. a big pill. You're Fat just big pills. downer. I got yeah. Two pills for you're you. An you're like the world's largest, uh, like, Suppository. Yes. First of all, yes. you know that's, what? That's the highest compliment I'm gonna start, anybody. I'm going to start me. calling you. It's the MJ Morning Show with <laughs> me, MJ, Roxanne, Froggy, and Suppository. Look. 
take calls. That's your new that's name. That's a great name. Yeah, you're not suppository. Shut up, suppository. Listen, we don't want to hear from call you. Call me what you want, bleepers. But like that, that's not wrong. <laughs> that's the best Supposit radio Fester. name ever. Listen. Suppository. <laughs> That would First be a good all, intern name. So all I know is you're suppository. <laughs> Doug is blasting Casanova. That's all I got from that segment. All right, move, move, move it along. Can I move along now? Please. <laughs> this show sucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Folks, All right. do us a favor. Yes. This, this is some entertaining crap. Yeah. Spread the word. We've got no budget for new TV commercials or billboards. So <laughs> spread the word that the best radio <laughs> entertainment in the morning on the radio is the MJ Morning Show here on Q105, 104.7 FM. All right. I teased a couple of things earlier, so let's get to these. Wearing jeans is is bad for the planet. You are, if you wear jeans, you are destroying the planet. Yeah, this is the latest, uh, you know, environmental, uh, you know, you're evil. Yeah, jeans. Now they're going after jeans. What if you wear jeans and you're eating a hamburger oh my at the same time? God, and then the cow's pooping and, mm-hmm. and, and pooting and all that stuff. Yep. All right. Uh, I haven't worn jeans in a while. They chafed me up too good. Yeah, for decades, denim designers... Have cranked out the skinny, the straight leg, the low rise, the boot cut. The... Anyway, now you've got uh, environmentalists and researchers that are saying that research shows that wearing a pair of fast fashion jeans creates a whopping 2.5 kilograms of carbon emissions. The environmental wear and tear of the pants is equivalent to driving 6.4 miles in an average gasoline-powered car. So now they're trying to demonize jeans. Wow. I thought jeans would be one of the more eco-friendly. Well, uh, they're uh, cotton. Well, well, they well, last forever. Well, one of the caveats here is that they're saying fast fashion or if somebody wears the jeans once. Nobody wears, unless you're a celebrity, that's part of the story, is that some celebrities uh, wear jeans once. Yeah, but then do they throw them into a landfill, or do they uh, recycle them, or sell them, yeah, or listen, donate them? Or, or, a lot of these celebrities, they get all kinds of swag and crap, and you know what it's like. Celebrities get all kinds of free crap. And so I would imagine a lot of this stuff gets sold on eBay or ends up on, uh, what, the real reel or something or, yeah. you know, whatever. But the research shows that uh, a pair of jeans is the equi- the manufacturing process, the equivalent of s- driving 6.4 miles in a gas-powered car. So, yeah, they're, they're trying to shame people. Uh, into not wearing jeans now, because uh, I don't know anyone that wears jeans like once. And then the story goes on to say that uh, some wear jeans an average of seven times before they're thrown away. Who wears jeans just seven times before they're thrown away? That is garbage. This whole story sucks. This is this yeah. is garbage. Especially you were right last segment. What? The show sucks. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you see that story pop up about the jeans. That's uh, so weird. I don't know. What? I don't understand people who wear jeans, first of all. It's kind of like. Well, but you don't understand people who wear jeans? Yeah, I what don't do you like mean? it. Just, I don't like the look. Just because you have chafing issues doesn't mean everybody does. <laughs> and they're so uncomfortable. Wait a minute. You don't wear jeans at all? Have you, when's the last time you saw me in jeans? Never. never. I've never seen you in jeans. You know, there that's a good go. point. Yeah, I, it, that would be, I, I can't even imagine you in jeans. Because I would yeah. look like a dork. <laughs> Like MJ sort of looks like. I have like never, in his black never. jeans. I don't. And how do you look now? Awesome. Okay. Just <laughs> you, you look. You look fantastic. The, I just want to get my barometer right on your appearance. <laughs> just wear pants. Wear some pants. Hey, uh, we have an update. You know that weird story. Remember we did this back in November. You remember the 22 year old young woman that posed as a 14 year old student and picked up oh, like, yeah. middle schoolers on social media locally. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That was crazy. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, we have an update on this because she was in court yesterday. And, man, there are some uh, new allegations that are being made here. I'm talking about Alyssa Zinger. That's quite the zinger. 23 years old now. And she was uh, 
diddling 12 to 15-year-olds because she pretended that she was a 14-year-old homeschooled girl when she was 22 years old. Can you imagine that? 22 years old, and she's not bad looking. She's I know. A, I don't understand. She could go to like Chili's and pick up a guy at the bar. I don't get. Yeah, she's 22 years old. The or, length. She's 20. She's 23 <laughs> now. But you know, even in her Hillsborough County, uh, like jail <laughs> scrubs, or you know, even in her prison, she yeah. looks pretty good. I she's mean, hot. She's an eight for Chili's. Yeah. No. No makeup. <laughs> Who the hell gets picked up in Chili's? A lot of people. A lot of single Ooh. people go to Chili's. Ooh, I mean, Sucking down some baby back ribs yeah. and you get a hookup. No, you ever gone to the bar? You ever gone to Chili's and seen the bar? It's all singles. Well, what about Applebee's? Yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on a date yeah, night. Same thing. Got to Burma Street, stay with the Oreo shake. All right, so here's the deal. Alyssa Zinger is 23 now, was 22, and they rearrested her last week after detectives with TPD, Tampa Police. They learned of new victims. So, new victims. Now, after the arrest, there's no indication that she was still uh, diddling after the arrest back in November. But they learned of victims that were previous before the arrest. So, she was rearrested again. Tampa police detectives, four new victims, aged 12 to 15, who were sexually involved with Alyssa Zinger. And according to TPD, uh, Zinger, who is attractive, I'm looking at her mugshot right now, and she could probably land most guys. Yeah, we're talking about guys here. Yes, yeah, she she's, has she, a niche. She's not a bad-looking blonde. She's a, Let me see her. Look come at her. Come on to my computer. Go over to, go over to Fester's to computer. computer. It's right there. Come here. Let's cuddle up here. All right. So, oh, you know who she looks like? Oh. I don't know. Get out of here. <laughs> She's kind of hot, though. She's that's, a good what woman. that's what I'm saying. What is she doing? Oh, man. She's a Chili's 10. I mean, she's... <laughs> Solidly. Yeah, she's an Applebee's 11. Yes. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Can I buy you some nachos? Do you have a son? She was using TikTok. Uh, TikTok. <laughs> she was using TikTok and Snapchat to pick up like 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds. Oh. Could you imagine the 15 year old landing her? I tell I, all my friends. Well, but the deal is, is that she pretended she was 14, and there's well, no way she's looking at her. L- listen, w- one of her one of her defenses is that she has psychological and developmental problems yeah. that caused her. She must. To do this. And then, before I play some of the judge audio, and again, this is a local story. It's getting national attention. Before I play the judge audio from yesterday, there's a new twist. The parents, I don't know if the parents are going to be charged with, I don't know, accessory after the fact or yeah, probably not that. Probably, her parents? Yeah, her, her parents. Uh, probably maybe tampering with evidence or falsifying. What the, did you, did, you, did her mom drive her no. because she said she was fourteen? No, the parents are accused of giving Tampa police detectives one of mom's old cell phones, claiming that it was the daughter's. Because if they they're not going to find any information or data, <sighs> and they, they quickly figured out that it was a mom old cell phone and not the daughter's cell phone. I guess they wow, nice move, mom. They, they couldn't find any of the the apps that she used or any of the data or anything that might have been left. On the phone. So uh, here's the judge. This is uh, this is the judge, uh, Laurel Ward, in court yesterday speaking about this. You don't really seem to grasp uh, the problem here. You are the problem here. Your actions on these boys are illegal. This defendant lived a full life masquerading as a 14-year-old girlfriend to a true 14 year old. She met his friends, she met their parents. The police and MB's father are texting and calling her parents. Her parents knew what she was doing in July of 2023. Wow. So, was that the judge? There we go, that Judge Laurel Ward, a little more here. What we know is you have been the adult. You've been preying upon them. You have been taking advantage of them. You have been abusing them based on the allegations that the state has put forth. Every time something happens, um, 
that the state puts on that maybe you disagree with, you shake your head no. You don't seem to understand that the problem is not who recorded the video. Right, so the judge is like letting her have it. And then, you know, she's was taken back into custody. She's wearing the orange prison outfit. She's got leg shackles on uh, in court. And then this is where the judge admonishes the parents. But what I can't understand is when they are trying to help you to the extent that it interferes with the criminal investigation and to the extent that it helps you evade accountability and responsibility. Yeah, so I wonder if the parents are going to be charged with uh, obstructing the investigation because they gave the cops, the Tampa police detectives, gave uh, yeah, yeah, the, they, mom, the mom's yeah. phone uh, claiming that it was the daughter's phone. Definitely. They're, yeah. they're in trouble. Yeah, they could be in some serious trouble. Not good. Wow. Yeah. Hey, we have an update on uh, Morgan Wallen. God, he, can you believe? That guy can't keep it together. He's on top of the world, and he's just... Yeah, what is wrong with him? You know, he, he got through that whole N-word controversy... He gets drunk and does crazy stuff. And then, yeah. th that's right. When he was in the Uber, he, he used the N word, right? Wasn't that the story? And yeah, some, he was recorded like, like, like outside somebody's house. Some ring cameras caught him yelling down the street to yeah. one of his friends. And he was drunk. And then, the story that broke yesterday is that yeah, you know he, what's going on? Why he did this, right? Morgan. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get to that here. Uh, that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, Morgan Wallen threw a chair off of the sixth floor of a bar in downtown Nashville. Did you see the chair? That thing was looked pretty heavy. That thing could have <laughs> done some damage. From the sixth floor, would it have killed somebody if it hit him? Uh, uh, yeah. It missed two cops mm -hmm. on, the, on the street down mm -hmm. below. Right. It missed two Nashville police officers. Almost hit him. A chair being thrown from the sixth floor? Yeah, that could be a deadly freaking missile. It's a lot of force. My God. All right, so the story is... So why do you do it? Allegedly, a source told the Daily Mail that Wallen was trying to deal with his ex's new relationship status. That he was upset because his ex fiance KT Smith, was eloping and getting married to some other guy. And he got all aggravated and threw the chair off of the rooftop bar. Six floors below. Mm. Wait, he was married? Or uh, you said fiance. His ex-fiance. Yeah, that's that's a terrible reason. You need to work on your anger management Yeah, skills. I'm upset that my ex-fiance is marrying some other guy, so I'm going to throw a chair off the sixth floor of a bar in Nashville, Tennessee. What's her name? KT Lang? Katie K what? K Katie Lang. Mm. KT Smith. Does she know Lang? I, I doubt it, Frog. I think, I think all the K and then another initials know each other. But, They're man, this guy's in trouble. Then videos emerged of him being arrested after throwing the chair from the rooftop bar. Poor Mar Morgan's little heart got hurt. What a wuss. Morgan's in, uh, I think, some serious trouble. I mean, here's, a, here's, a, here's an idea, Morgan. It's felonious. Go get any other girl you want. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah, you know what? That's very good advice. The number one country star in the world. Yeah, yeah he so. just he just keeps racking up the material to sing about though. So Froggy that's... like never. Oh, you think there's gonna be a country song about throwing <laughs> throw a chair off a bar? <laughs> but it here, there it goes. His air chair. On air. a dare, I threw the chair. <laughs> So, On a dare, I threw the chair. There you go. So he and Katie Smith <laughs> couldn't nope. stop almost. They no relation to KD Lang. He and KT Smith, they broke up in 2019. Yeah, get over it, it's man. A, it, it, Five years ago? Yeah, it's not like he, she got dumped last week and then she runs off with a guy. All right. I've only slept with 5,000 women since my baby left me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, country That's a song. good line. That's a hit. I only slept with 5,000 women since my baby left me in, tw the, in 2019. Yeah, that's the name of the song. <laughs> Heard rumors about that guy. He's a uh, he's quite a mover and a shaker. Uh, who brought up earlier? Uh, I, I jotted this down because one of you guys brought this up, that there's a way that women on Instagram are sneaking their boobs, whereas typically... Their boobs would be banned as far as 
Oh. Pornography. Who brought this up? I, I don't know. Who? I brought it up. Yeah. Have you seen this? No, oh, no. Froggy brought it up. Right. Okay. So I, I jotted this down I because you, you were starting to mention, hey, guys, there's this thing on Instagram where women are getting away with showing their boobs. And then you were beginning to tell us, but then we had to go on the air, and I just quickly jotted down IG, Instagram, boobs. What's the story, Froggy? Well, it's weird. Like, I've noticed in my IG stories and stuff, I'll come across just this late, like, some girls will just have their boobs out. And then they're breastfeeding a kid. But then when you look closer, it looks like a fake baby, one of those realistic <laughs> looking babies. And I think it's a way to show their boobs. Under the guise of breastfeeding? Under the guise of breastfeeding. And then you go and then, you know, they link to your own their OnlyFans or whatever. So it's like they're hoodwinking you to get you to see the rest of their stuff. Oh, wow. But they're using fake babies and they're just whipping them out. Does Instagram permit breastfeeding? Okay, uh, they must, I guess, but I didn't realize how strict Instagram was because I got flagged one time because of this show. I was just putting up a clip. Remember we talked about butts one day and it was like a picture of some butts and they said my content was inappropriate. And it was like a news article that I was showing to the camera. Anyways, they're strict. So... See, look, here's an example of one. They, they let, but I guess they let you breastfeed, but they don't let you, you know... Yeah, here's a whole Reddit page. What in the actual heck is going on with these fake oh, breastfeeding that's a, videos? Oh, my God. That is a fake baby. Yeah, and that's a real boob. Oh, my. This lady is totally touched. She's opening up her, her what do you call those gym tops, you know, the with the zipper in front? Uh, She's opening up and showing full boob. And holding a fake and, baby to her nipple. nipple, and she's holding a fake baby. But there's, like, thousands of women doing it. So is uh, it, you can stop looking at it now. I mean, she, you've seen it five times. Nice rack. All right. Anyway, so there's a Reddit page on it. That's what I would. Oh said. my yeah. god. So is that a loophole? Are women are women allowed to breastfeed on Instagram? But you can't show. But if you don't have a baby and you're a model, you just use a fake baby. But it's a fake baby. It's not even a real baby. I know. That's the thing. Oh, it's weird to me. Wow. And I can't stop looking at it. That is, we, hey, Fester, can you, uh, Roxanne, can you do some research? Yeah, what is it? Or, well, exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so, but we didn't get to this, we didn't solve the problem? I mean, no, no, I'm it seems ask, like it's pretty apparent. Uh, no, no, I'm asking if the question. Bra- on, yes. On Instagram, <laughs> we didn't solve the problem. Women, are, women are not allowed to just show gratuitous nudity or right. boobs. Can but I show it, my it, nipple well, on no, no, Instagram? Are, are you allowed to show no. breastfeed? Is that the loophole? Are women able to show their boobs on Instagram if they're breastfeeding versus just, hey, look at my chest, you know? Uh, okay, photos of female breasts are banned if they include nipple except for, except for pictures of breastfeeding. There we. That's the there loophole. That's what they're doing because the baby that Froggy just showed me with the very attractive blonde with the nice chest. <laughs> it's the milk hole loophole. It's, it is. It's a loophole. She had a fake. She's got a fake baby. Look, here's another one. Here's another one. Oh, here's another one here. It's a doll. <laughs> it's a cabbage patch. It's a cabbage. It's a Chucky doll. Oh, oh my. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's the loophole. Are all those babies fake? Oh, I, my God. No, those babies look real. Oh, okay. You know what? There are some real babies, but a lot of the women that are trying to you know, get guys to look at their nudity, they're using fake babies. And they're like, whoa, look at her boobs. I wonder if she has an OnlyFans. And then look they, this one. they got Lo you. And behold, one one of them is using a Barbie doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that cabbage patch. It's a, wow. It's a little hoodwink. It's a wambuki. It is a wham. It's a total wambuki is what it is. It's a wambooby. Wow. It's a weird movie that I'm kind of all about. That's some crazy Those stuff. Those fake babies look real, though, so, some of them. Are we angry at these people? It's just uh, interesting. I mean, I'm not angry at them. Uh, moving along here on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, oh, folks, if you ever have any uh, any good material for us, and I, and I get email all the time. Uh, people send me stories. People send me observations. Uh, people have uh, little intel for me it, hot tips gossip if you have any gossip anything i need to know about you can send it to my private email mj at mjmorningshow.com that's mj at mjmorningshow.com i wanted to share an email i wanted to share a very heartfelt email that i got but folks you can email me anytime at mj at mjmorningshow.com and uh, thanks to uh, Don, the IT guy, uh, Team Logic IT in St. Petersburg, 
uh, Don and his team, they set up my uh, my new Microsoft email, which is much better than my prior email. So my email is like more reliable. It's more efficient. Uh, so thanks to Don, the IT guy, for helping me with the MJ Morning Show email. Listen to this. I get this email yesterday, uh, and I'm going to keep the, the writer anonymous, but I think it's a very nice email. For two years now, my wife has been in and out of the hospital due to a brain stem stroke and infection causing her to become a bilateral amputee. Every morning after dropping off my son at school and my wife is hospitalized, I listen to your show and it puts me in a better mood. When she is home and I'm doing her morning care routine, I put on the podcast MJTV I've been caring for my wife alone for two years, and I just want to thank you for being there to make me smile more and keep my mind off the bad times. There were times that I would go to the hospital three times a day to feed her because she couldn't eat for anyone but me. My son is about to turn seven, and unfortunately, she returned to the hospital and trying to juggle being a dad and my wife's caretaker is much harder than I anticipated. But again, your show makes a difference in my day, so thank you. I currently have my car in for repair at Veterans Ford because how you talk so highly of the staff at Veterans Ford, and you are right. They are doing everything they can to make the experience better than other dealerships. Please thank the rest of your staff that make this show possible. I don't know how these past two years would have turned out without you. Aw. That is nice. Aw, that is nice. I mean, I'm so so sorry for what he's going through. But listen, if we can just offer any uh, respite or solace or, you know, give him any opportunity to take his mind off things or help him through the day, then that makes me happy. Um, Can you please thank us now on his behalf? For real, me asking the letter. Can you I please just, thank I, the crew? I just you read re- the letter, but you have not right. thanked us on his behalf. Right. Good point. One yeah. at a time. All right. uh, thank Froggy first. F- yeah. Froggy, thank you. I don't accept. Uh, can you? Uh, <laughs> can you uh, thank me now? Fester, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. uh, Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, can you You're welcome. thank Andrew? Yep, we have another staff maybe. member in there. Uh, thank Andrew, and, please. And thank, thank Andrew, our producer. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. And the Beasleys for giving us the opportunity yeah, to yeah. do that. Yep, thank you. Thanks to the cash. The long list. Thanks to the cash kitty. Oh, look, there's another boo video. Yep. Uh, th- stop showing him his th- th- Thanks videos. to the ladies with the boobs on Instagram <laughs> with, with, with fake babies. That's somebody to thank. Oh, my thank. God. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I thought it was very nice. Very so, nice. So if, if you want to drop me an email about anything, folks, it's MJ. At mjmorningshow.com. That's mj at mjmorningshow.com. Let me lighten around a couple of things of interest. Number one, this sucks. I hope they rectify this and rectify it. Try and solve this riddle. I'm the best at riddles. A lady's vehicle was caught on a speed camera well over the speed limit, she gets a ticket in the mail. You know, uh, we, we, there are some places in Florida that have speed cameras. I'll tell you where we need a speed camera. Uh, Mayor Jane Castor, uh, listen, I, I might even call, uh, you know, the chief of police uh, here in the city of Is Tampa. Is he in charge of putting up speed cameras? Well, you know, maybe he can, you know, maybe he can get the, you know, the, the process going. You know, I, I might just have to, you know, put a, you know, call in. But because I'm, I'm telling you right now that West Shore is a speedway. This is West Shore just south of Kennedy. And it's, it's the stretch where it's two lanes and then narrows down to one lane just at uh, a zeal. Okay. It is a 30 mile. By the way, city of Tampa. Somebody plowed over the first 30 mile an hour sign. It is sitting snapped like a twig. Oh, all right. <laughs> but, uh, I, this, oh, I mean, this just shows geez. you. This, this just shows you the problem. 
the 30 mile an hour sign is Man. snapped off like a twig. I mean, the metal post is in the concrete and it's snapped off and it's lying on the ground. 30 mile an hour speed sign. This is right at West Shore and Cleveland. Uh, right there. Yeah. The 30 mile an hour sign yeah. is snapped off like a Mr. Salty pretzel stick. And it's just lying in the median. You know how fast somebody must have, must have been going to snap that thing off cleanly? All right. So they are. it's a 30 mile an hour zone there. And people are driving 50, 60, 70 miles an hour without a doubt. I'm telling you. TPD, you could sit there. That could be your new favorite fishing hold, uh, fishing hole. To you could pick people off all day long there. Your little TPD honey pot right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 30, 40 miles over the speed limit. I'm telling you right now. It's a honey hole. Is that an out headlight? <laughs> I'm telling you right now. That that uh, you know I I ought to I ought to call Lee Burkaw Lee Lee yeah. the chief alone. Lee Burkaw is the uh, the <laughs> yeah call him up yeah, Lee Burkaw <laughs> is the chief of police city of Tampa. By the way, can I uh, say that uh, in support of uh, chief of police Lee Burkaw, city of Tampa, I fully back uh, the plan at city council to let him retire, get his pension and then get rehired as chief as an independent contractor. I fully... listen. Me he, too. He's put like 30-plus years in and served the people of Tampa. I fully support that plan. And, you know, he's the right guy for the job. He's doing a wonderful job. All of the officers, every TPD officer that I know, they can't speak more highly of Chief Lee Burkhoff. They love the guy. He's so nice. He is. And he's doing a great job with the city of Tampa uh, Police Department. So I totally support him getting his pension, retiring, then getting rehired as an independent contractor to remain on as chief because he's doing such a wonderful job for the city of Tampa. And that's what I care about. And the fact that he ought to put a whole bunch of traffic detail at West Shore and uh, Azeal and, and start nabbing these 70 mile and a 30 mile an hour uh, zone drivers. Uh, where was I? I don't know. Oh, uh, the speed cameras. Ah, yes. yes. So, so, comes back yeah. to me now. so I'm, I'm not a big fan of speed cameras, <laughs> but I would totally support speed cameras going up on uh So what's this riddle? What's the riddle? Right, here's yeah, what, the, what that's the riddle? where we were going. We weren't talking about speed. We're talking about the riddle. All right, here's the, here's the riddle. Woman's vehicle is captured on a speed camera going well over the speed limit. She is stunned, gets a $105 ticket. In the mail. But it wasn't her. And it was not somebody else driving her vehicle. Because you know what happened? And that's, huh? kind of, that's kind of unfair. You know, like the red light uh, runners? We, we've got we've got the red light cameras here. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of them are in actually the city of Tampa. Uh, I'm not a fan of those. Um, you know, and then remember they were caught. Remember the red light uh, intersections? Remember some years ago they were caught shortening the yellows? To, yeah. ca to catch more people running the red lights. That was a, a racket. But here's the deal. Think about this. If you're running a red light, if you if you give your car to a friend to drive and they run the red light, you're getting the ticket. If your car is in for service at a dealership and they're out on a test drive and the, the tech runs a red light, you get the ticket. Mm. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, but uh, the speeding, I, I would support a speed camera on West Shore and uh, Azeal and Cleveland because they're flying through there. Anyway, so what is the riddle? The woman got a speeding ticket, but she wasn't driving and nobody else was driving. So how the hell did her vehicle, this happened in East Cleveland, Ohio, Joanne Gibson got a $105 speeding ticket. And she wasn't driving, hmm. nor was anyone else driving. So riddle me this. How? How did it happen? Tell me. Who would like to guess? Uh, Roxanne, do you, don't look it up. 
Oh, I'm not looking uh, it up. Right, okay, right. I have a legitimate guess. Right, this what is, is just, what, what's your guess? Okay, she has a Tesla, and the Tesla snuck out in the middle of the night, a self-driving car, <laughs> self-drove itself out in the middle of the night. <laughs> that's what these cars do now. No. You cannot was, trust them no, to stay in your garage it, while you're sleeping. It was a Ford Flex. Oh, okay. It was an well, older older Ford Flex. They don't make that anymore. No, they do don't. They don't. That blows uh, a hole in my theory. Uh, Fester? Yes, your theory is wrong. Fester, would you like to guess? Was it being towed? Ooh. Or like on like a car hauler or something? Did you say towed? That was my guess. Damn it. Yes! I Survey think of says yes. Fester, how'd you think of that? Wow, oh, your automotive oh. synthesis is so on. Oh. I just like riddles. Yes, the car was being Whoa. towed. The tow truck driver was driving like a bat out of hell with her Ford Flex hooked up to the back. So why would she and get a ticket? The, because the speed camera took a picture of her license oh, plate. Oh, the back of it. Yes, it took the speed camera, got her license plate, and now she's like trying to go. It's a private company, and that's what happens. Like in the city of Tampa, the red light cameras, that's a private company that manages and maintains the cameras. It's like out of Ohio or something. Yeah, they have the, the whole room of uh, employees that look at the videos to determine whether somebody you know ran the red light or didn't stop before making the right turn on red, blah, blah, blah. But that's it. Yeah, Fester, good guess. She, she was being towed. Her car was hooked up to a tow truck, and the tow truck was driving like a maniac. What are you being good on a game show? Yeah. Yeah, I have like Jeopardy knowledge. Not like really smart person no, Jeopardy. No, I mean like the biggest loser. And she's trying to get the ticket expunged, and she's like in the middle of all this rigmarole. What do you say? He said I'd be good at a game show, and I said, yeah, I have like Jeopardy knowledge. And he's like, no, you should be on the biggest loser, the fat <laughs> yeah, person the show. F- <laughs> so, funny, funny. Thank you. Suppository, and I think it's very funny. <laughs> 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 Throwback. The there, there are a couple, yeah. of, couple of funny things on the show today. Yeah. Yeah, we try. Yeah. All right. Hey, I got another car story when we get back. Oh, you have got to hear this. Fester, what have you always said about Costco and Sam's Club? You can. You can bring anything back. At any time. Anytime. You can bring right. anything back. All right. You have got to hear a Costco return story. This is insane. And it's coming up. Also, guys with handbags. This is uh, what a new trend. Get to that coming up. Got a couple of. Uh, we got a. We got a flight diverted because of. Uh, well, not a mechanical issue. Got a flight diverted and not an unruly passenger. We got a uh, a major airline flight diversion. We'll tell you that coming up. Uh, oh, and uh, we got a United Airlines first class passenger that was thrown off the plane because of something he did during the boarding process. Uh, We got a lot of stuff. Uh, This brings to an end over an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. And man, was this freaking entertaining. This is why you listen to the MJ Morning Show every day. And this is why you should bring us into work. So if you're going into work now or whenever you go to work, bring us in with you. You can keep listening to us on your phone. All you need is the Odyssey app the TuneIn app, the iHeart app, or the MyQ105 app. You can listen to us by searching Q105 Tampa Bay. You can listen to us live. Listen to us on the regular radio in the office. Just tune it to 104.7 FM or turn on MJ TV. Or go to our website, mjmorningshow.com, where you can find MJ TV and watch us live on TV in the studio or click on the Listen Live button, the big red button on the upper right-hand uh, corner of our website mjmorningshow.com and listen to us live when you get to work you don't have to stop listening just because you're parking the car and getting out keep listening because we got a lot of crap next here on the mj morning show on q105 plus cash kitty's on the way in just over an hour next cash kitty happens at 10 a.m and you're shot to win another thousand dollars with the cash kitty so 8 a.m 10 a.m
This is the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, Roxanne's got a couple things. From, you're, you're very excited about dining in yeah, the Yeah, don't have to be quiet. Yeah, why? Have it be a surprise tomorrow. All right. I, I'm so excited. Do, do you think anybody just understood what I just said or did? I no, they just thought you were singing. Dancing on the roof? What is it? All right, so Roxanne's mm-hmm. got a couple of things tomorrow. Uh, on the, already, we've got a couple of things for tomorrow. It is 9.02 at the MJ Morning Show. The next Cash Kitty makes an appearance in less than an hour. So 10 o'clock, the Cash Kitty is back again. And the Cash Kitty has another $1,000. Our national contest, you know, you get the keyword, you text it in, you put it on the website, on the app, and that uh, you could be the next $1,000 winner. We do it at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3, and then 5 p.m. Cash Kitty here on Q105 and the MJ Morning Show. Fester, you once returned a TV after... Like a week? No, 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 no. How no. long was it? It was six months on the button. Oh, oh it was? Yeah. But you, I, I thought it was quicker because I thought your wife was out of town and you went out to like Sam's Club. Yes. You bought a big TV. Yes. You had a friend help you mount it on the wall yep. and then your wife came home. And the clicker had too many buttons oh, on it. Oh, she hated the remote. No one calls it a clicker I anymore. I call it a clicker. <laughs> I, 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 I do too. I got yeah. a clicker. What do you, call, clicker? What do you, what do you call it? The it's remote? a remote. It's I, a clicker. I, like said, I say clicker. I haven't said clicker since the Zenith Space Command that my parents had in 1972 when it went ka-chunk, ka ka I literally call it the clicker. Where's the clicker? Who has the clicker? It's a remote. It's the clicker. And your wife came home for like visiting friends and she hated the remote control. It was too complicated. So she made you rip the TV off the wall and return it. So, oh, you tried to get her to like it. And- I tried to like, look, much like, you know, marrying me, it takes a little time to adjust to it and get to liking sort it. Sort of like a remote control yeah. Stockholm syndrome. Let's try it for a few All maybe right. a few days, a few yeah. weeks, a few weeks turn to a few months, and then my wife's like, hey. She she asked me immediately, how long do you have to return this? And I was like, I don't know, six months. And she's like, okay. She set a calendar in her phone that said, you know, she's like, I got home like on a Tuesday. She's but like, you just arbitrarily I, said six months. I think that was, the, I don't know if that was a policy for large what, electronics. What or, brand TV was it? I don't know. A Schmuckio or a, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think a, it wasn't yeah. a Sony. Sony, Samsung, LG. I got an LG. L, first time I got an LG and yeah. it had, it had. 40 buttons on the clicker. Vizio. I ended up getting oh, a Vizio. Oh, and the top brand on the, the planet right now, Hisense. Hisense? No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, TCL, <laughs> yeah, TCL. Is, a, is another one. Yeah, no. yeah, give me the Sony A95, which uh, they say is like the best TV on the market you know right what? now. You keep that. I'll take the Vizio and yeah. the two grand in my pocket. All right. And uh, we, got, we ended up getting a Vizio that has like... No buttons on no it. No buttons. It doesn't even come with a remote. Right. It's like you just have to blink. You got to get a step ladder and uh, get up and push some buttons behind the TV every time you want to turn the volume it's up not and quite down. That bad. All right. But. So Fester returns a TV after six months. No box. Yeah, that, and this is this is great. No receipt. No receipt. It's no just box. On that big, big old Sam's Club. You probably had the, the dolly. Do you have the bracket still attached? Or no, you kept the bracket. I right? did. I did. I did. I had to have the bracket rehung to put up my new TV. Oh, the new TV. So Fessa brings back a TV with no box, no receipt, back to Sam's Club yeah. after six months. Listen to this one. This is insane. This was a Reddit post. I just watched someone return a TV that they purchased in 2002. <laughs> 22 oh years ago. And the person took a picture of this gigantic clunky rear projection tv from 2002 that's on the the like the cart they like, you know the the push cart yes that's the same cart that i wheeled in my yeah. tv on but this is a, a stand-up t- it's so such a big tv the huge base it's a standalone tv with the huge base the big huge bezel these were the projection sets they were two two and a half feet deep because they had the yeah. they had the bulb in the back and it projected on a mirror on the inside. These things were clunky. Flat gig- screens weren't a thing in two thousand. These are huge. So two thousand two. 
I've never considered buying a couch from Costco. Yep. But with this return policy, oh, you can use it for yeah, twenty years. Yeah, you yeah. Your, your fat butt could like indent the thing. You could like essentially make it unusable and bring it back in you know ten years. Okay, that's a legitimate problem we have at our oh house. Oh my god, what if you have a relative that is like homebound, couchbound, and they they start to like pee and poop on the couch, and then they start growing into the couch. Okay. Because there are stories like you return the whole couch with your relative still attached, grown into the cushions. In my family, I'm most likely to be that relative. Yes, you are. And uh, But yeah, the, Costco will take it back. I thought it was a prank when I saw it. As a person that doesn't really take advantage of Costco's impressive return policy, this person returned a TV they purchased in 2002. Did they still have the receipt? Oh, my God. It is a Samsung. This is the craziest thing I've, I've seen. It's like the speakers are in it's the nice. base. It's huge. Yeah. No TV looks like this nowadays. No, no, no. This is a rear projection yeah. set that sat on the huge pedestal, and the speakers were in that cloth in the pedestal. Then the TV was up on top like a lollipop kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Wow. Two th- and, and Costco took it back. 2002. Wow, good Jeez. for them. That is the craziest return. What do you know, Roxanne, and I'm asking you because this is more up your alley, about uh, this latest, and it's not new because we've talked about Merces, a man purse. Mm-hmm. We've talked about these in the past, but there's like a new wave of guys carrying handbags. Travis Kelsey carries a handbag? Oh, yeah, every time they're walking... Wait, like a purse? Yes. Oh, I thought like like the bag they carry when they're walking to the game, you know, and they show them in the bag. And no, no, like- no, no. Travis Kelsey apparently is carrying like a man purse, a handbag. LeBron James. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it just is guys have more stuff on them now. Maybe you have your accessories with your with your phone. You've got your big cell phone. You've got maybe you have two cell phones. Maybe you have another cell phone you hide that your family doesn't know about. There are like pictures. A- Listen to this. There are pictures. I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at the uh, rapper ASAP Rocky carrying a purse. Are, are these purses or are these just really no. stylish duffel bags? Harry Styles has a pur- it's like a women's purse strapped over their shoulder. Harry Styles has a purse. Harry may not be the best example. Here's a picture of, uh, who's this Australian? Jacob Alordi, you know, the Australian. Yeah, act- you, you know what? I, I'm i just going to say. This is a woman's yeah. purse that he has on. Okay, I'm looking at these photos, MJ. As as a woman, I I think I would like it better if they wore it crossbody. It seems more like, I, I like the look better for a guy. I don't like a guy. Like a messenger bag? Yeah, yeah, I can go with the crossbody look. No. But I don't like it just an on-the-shoulder purse. Not a fan. Well, this is an on-the-shoulder purse that looks like, exactly like something my wife might have. Okay. Yep. Uh, LeBron James has been seen with a with a like a purse. Uh, oh, David Beckham. That's David, right. David Beckham is pictured here with a a man purse. It looks That's right. right. Okay. I like, oh, yeah. That's right. It looks like what's the what's the brand with like the the Cubert looking pattern. I, I don't know. Huey uh, Vuitton? No, uh, Goyard. Goyard, that's right. Yeah, the uh, Goyard. Uh, Gorder? No, Goyard. No, not Goiter. He has a Goiter. I walk around with yeah. my Goiter. Yeah, you've got a Goiter, but no. Okay, so. You've got uh, a giant Goiter in your neck. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm looking at a picture of the rapper a- ASAP Rocky, yep. right? ASAP Rocky. A-S-A-P. I get it right. ASAP Rocky. ASAP. Even I got that right. You're going to have to get a shot, Roxanne. He is carrying a big pink purse. He's just holding it like a handbag. Again, I, I think the messenger, I think you can get away with the messenger bag look as a guy, but then it just looks like you have a lot of stuff. What, do you work for the Pony Express carrying a messenger <laughs> bag? I have a delivery for you. Hold on, let me go. Go, boy. Go, boy. Yeah. Faster. Faster, boy. Yeah. It's good to have your message here. Yeah. Special <laughs> delivery. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dude, All right, dude, slow down now, boy. You're sh- slow down, dude. You're shaking. All right. the, you're shaking the equipment. This this Good whole boy. this whole radio station is hanging on by a thread. Here's some oats for you, young young boy. Dude, listen to me. This don't bang the equipment. We're, All right, let's go. Message delivered. We're supposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're supposed to get our new Cantor. studio. Cantor. We're, we're, we're supposed to get our new studio like within like three months yeah. or so. But What kind of rules are we going to have in that new studio? Well, we're we're going to treat it nicely. You don't like being fester uh, as let, a horse? And let, the... let, let me, let, <laughs> Messenger? Let, let me tell you right now that... <laughs> That I, I I don't who knows if I'll even be here when the new studio finally gets built. I I, I don't know. I won't. Yeah, Froggy will. I won't. I, I have Fester no. Won't. Cl- it's gonna be the uh, Roxanne won't. MJ Roxanne Andrew show. It's gonna be Roxanne. Or it's gonna be MJ and Andrew. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the Roxanne and Andrew show. Me and Roxanne awesome. are taking over for Chad and Christy. It'd be the Andrew and Andrew show. <laughs> Hi, today we're gonna talk about Disney World. Shut up. What? I, I would so listen to that. What? <laughs> the Andrew Disney World show. I mean, podcast. Yeah, gotcha. These jokes stink. Hey. Let's get on a horse and get out of here. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, I, can I follow up on something, right. please? Go ahead. We were talking about the city of Tampa red light cameras, and we were saying, yeah, there's like some company where they just sit in a cubicle and they're looking at these and deciding who gets a ticket. I got a message from a, a TPD officer friend of mine. And they said uh, the red light cameras are reviewed by the Special Ops Division, Traffic and Air Service, and the third-party company is the one who prints and mails out the citations, oh. but we have to review them first. Okay. Yeah. I guess I feel a little less screwed knowing that a local guy looks at it first as opposed to a third-party vendor. Yeah, you know, that's that's actually a... That's a good uh, good piece of knowledge because I thought that the the vendors they maybe that's the case in some cities where the vendors uh, they look at the uh, speed cameras or they look at the red light cameras uh, right off the bat. All right, we have a lot of stuff to do in the uh, the final. Uh, what do we have? Another half an hour left here? Yeah, like what? Uh, about a lot of stuff to get to, like. What do you, what, you're what? Like, you're like, we have a lot of stuff like Roxy's. Like what? Like well, I'm going to tell you right you. now. No, you're gonna cha- no, like, no like, it's what? not a challenge. What, what, what do you, like... think, you think I'm faking it? You don't, we don't have a lot of stuff <laughs> to get to. Tell us more, MJ. What else do we have to talk about? Yeah, There's Fester, nothing to get to. You're all uh, hot and bothered on the cyber truck by Tesla. Yes, <laughs> it is nice. Listen, it's, it's a beautiful truck. Oh, I, li- I like them. I've seen like three of them around town. I haven't seen uh, any. First of all, it is a hideous looking vehicle. It looks to me like a a joke. If anybody has a Cybertruck and you want to take me for a ride, let me know. Well, it might be in the service department or broken down on the side of the road because here's the latest. New York Post yesterday, Cybertrucks were rushed out and malfunctioning at astounding rate. Listen to this. Tesla's long-delayed and pricey Cybertrucks are getting panned by furious owners for malfunctioning at an alarming rate just months after Elon Musk's futuristic vehicle hit the road, tales of the stainless steel Cybertrucks dying after traveling just one mile, randomly hard-breaking on wide-open road, and already showing rust spots, among other gripes, were shared in the Tesla Owners Club forum. So these are actual Tesla owners. Hmm. In a thread titled, Worst Delivery in My Life... Truck died in five minutes. A Southern California-based owner wrote that after taking his truck for a spin, the same day it was delivered, last month, the vehicle made it one mile down the road, started getting steering error, flashing red screen, pulled off side of highway. Now the truck is dead. I'm waiting for the tow truck. Hmm. Dealer couldn't do anything for me. It was a great five minutes. Tried everything, restarting. Screen is stuck black, keeps beeping. The user added that the thread, uh, the user added in the thread, which uh, was uh, first reported on uh, Jalopnik, which is a great auto. I love Jalopnik. It's a cool site. Great yeah. website. Love it. I got a bookmark. The owner received uh, the vehicle, which uh, starts at 80 grand one month after the highly publicized trucks went on sale last December. Two years behind schedule, and even then, Tesla really rushed these trucks out. What a nightmare, the disappointed owners said. Wow, how about that? And Fester, you still mm. want a cyber truck? Yes. Okay, you get, what, you get what you deserve, though. I'll then. buy one in 10 years. You get exactly what you deserve there, my friend. Uh, we have a couple of airplane issues here. Uh, first, a flight... On United Airlines, bound for Seattle, 
had to divert to Dallas. Why? Because a dog pooped on board, and apparently the smell was atrocious and would not leave the cabin. They had to make an emergency landing because of a dog poop. Ooh. Wow. That's awful. Yeah. The dog hotboxed the whole <laughs> plane. A, do that, yeah. a dog poop diversion. Uh, the <laughs> flight was from Houston to Seattle and had to land. Listen, it happened pretty what are you laughing at? Oh, wait, Buster and I just laugh at each other. Uh, keep going. I want to laugh. <laughs> so that's pretty fast. That's pretty quick into the flight. You're taking yeah, off from is. Houston, and you got to make an emergency landing in Dallas. Uh, dog had messy accident yeah. in the awesome. aisle right Ooh. in first class. Plane diverted to DFW. Ground crew spent... Over two hours cleaning carpets with paper towels. They don't have like hey. a like a Stanley Steamer Dude, thing. You, just, you could put hey, dogs zero in res. What's the matter with you? you call zero res. On zero the, res. On the plane. What's the matter with you, okay. Stanley? Sorry. Zero res. I'm sorry, zero res. Zero res. All right. So yeah, you get zero res out there, and yeah, I don't know. I wonder if they have zero res in Dallas. Can you look that up? I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, you get them out there, and you. Uh, you, you know, you clean the carpets, you know, with ZR water. Get that uh, dog poop smell right out of there. Smell made me ill. Gate agents kept yelling at passengers and the cabin crew. The smell never went away. First class toilet declared unusable as the dog's mess apparently was unresolved in there. Oh, my God. This That's is awful. It is. Can you imagine that? All right, then we have uh, somebody that was, like, totally alarmed and, like, oh, my God, I've, I'm, I'm scared to death. A pilot came out to fix a window on the airplane before takeoff. And they're like, oh, my God, why is the captain fixing the window? I want a certified mechanic. Uh, calm down. Put your pants back on. A, un a United again. A United Airlines. United's had a lot of interesting issues. Now, uh, are other airlines having these issues as well? They're just not getting reported as much. Or, but it seems like United's on a little bit of a a roll here, and it's not like a it's not like a wanted roll, you know. A United Airlines passenger was rattled, was upset, watching a window get replaced on our flight just before takeoff by one of the pilots. Now, I can't see which one it is. I can't see whether there are three stripes on the shoulder or four. You know, four is captain, three is first officer. Uh, the passenger, Kristen uh, something or other, yeah, it doesn't say doesn't say exactly. I guess she's a, a toddler blogger named Kristen. Documented the experience, put it on her Instagram, and I just want to tell Kristen, calm down. You know, a lot of people get all, you know, bent at it. Oh, my God, the window's cracked. No, <laughs> You have the actual real window of the airplane, which is the exterior, the glass window, you know, that's inside that, uh, like, um, riveted frame. Right. And then you have the the side paneling of the aircraft, and you have that little plasticky window. And then you have, like, the, what, two inches or so of airspace gap. What you're sitting next to in your row is not the window. That is like a cosmetic trim piece. The window is beyond. So the pilot was like helping to snap some piece of plastic for the cosmetic interior trim window covering into place, not the actual window of the airplane. So calm down, lady. He was like turning it into like a, a big national crisis here. Oh, my God. I, my window. It's United <laughs> Airlines. My window. My the pilot's fixing it. I want a mechanic to fix Calm down. Baby, calm down. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I thought it was a little true. musical <laughs> interlude <laughs> between breaths. I know you wanted to do that, MJ. That's what he does. All the no, what, yes. what was that? No, you don't know that song? What song is that? It, Sing it. Sing it all. I, I, that's all I know. That's it. Baby, Baby calm, calm down. down. Baby, calm down. <laughs> what is that? You haven't heard that? No. Andrew, do, can you find that, please, in the system? Yeah, Whoa. The, so, the song is called, Baby, calm down. <laughs> calm down, baby. It's um, uh, ser uh, Serena. Baby, calm down. Selena? Selena. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't. So, what? 
<laughs> I don't think I know that song. Selena Gomez uh, and, and, the and Rima. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, well, Selena. Maybe because you, you can't carry a tune. Maybe that's what you, uh, if you play the actual I song, well, maybe I know. All right, 921 at the MJ Morning Show. Uh, when we get back, the final chunk of the MJ Morning Show. Yes, Fester. Baby, come All right, stop. <laughs> 921. All right, suppository. All right, 921 at the MJ Morning Show. Final chunk of the MJ Morning Show is next. Don't miss it. Uh, we are 40 minutes away from the Cash Kitty coming back at 10 o'clock with another chance of 1000 bucks, And it is the MJ Morning Show. So later today, after the show, I'm going to be taking the...
It is 9.30 at the MJ Morning Show, and the final award-winning chunk, about 9.30 every single day before we shut things down and and call it a day here on the MJ Morning Show. Cash Kitty's on the way in a half an hour, so 9.30 exactly. Cash Kitty happens again at 10 o'clock, so 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 noon, 3, and then 5 p.m. You're shot at 1000 bucks each time at the Cash Kitty. It's as easy as can be. So easy, even a caveman can do it. All right. So we give you the keyword at those times every day, and then you text the keyword or you enter it on our app or on the website. Full instructions coming up at 10 o'clock with the new keyword and your chance to win a thousand bucks coming up in just a bit. A couple of celebrity items in minutes. I had a couple of other uh, airplane stories. We had the United flight diverted because a pet did a dookie. Uh, uh, <laughs> you didn't mean to say that. What? A dookie. A dookie. Uh, on the plane. And <laughs> they, they, the plane made it United Airlines, Houston to what I say. Was it Seattle or whatever? Somewhere. They had to make an emergency landing in, in Houston. Because of the, the dog went to the bathroom in the first-class cabin. They couldn't get the stink out of the plane. Then we have this. I don't know what it is. Another United Airlines story. But listen, this is not the airline's fault. A passenger in first class got booted because he pushed a woman during boarding. A oh, United wow. Airlines Global Services member shares that their family got a passenger kicked off a flight after the man behaved badly toward their sister, shoving her to get on the aircraft first. You know, there's... <laughs> what? Just wait in line. Come on, people. That's nuts. I mean, what is it? And you know what I've noticed lately? 
What? For a while, you know, people would abide by the accepted deplaning procedure, and that's you wait until your row is ready to go. That's how you deplane an airplane. There's always some ass that wants to cut. Oh, it. yeah. So they start walking right when the bell rings. They start walking in between everybody. Oh, the last flight that I had, we had a guy like pushing his way up as soon as the bing, yeah. uh, the seatbelt sign went off. This guy starts running down the aisle and then obviously gets stopped by if the We all got places to go, bud. By the people that are trying to get up. And it's like, come on, what, is this your first time on an airplane? Do you not know how this works? <laughs> it might be. Right. It's my first time you're, on Sometimes plane. it is, yeah. You're back in, in you know, 28B, and uh, I'm sorry that you got saddled with the middle seat, but uh, listen, you got to wait. So I, I was on a flight uh, recently. This was coming back from New York when we went to see Julian during uh, spring break. And we're coming back, and there was a guy, uh, we landed in Tampa, and this guy, like, rushes down the aisle and... You know, starts like, you know, getting in the way and trying to like kind of nudge people out of the way that are getting out of their seats to then open the bins to get their stuff out. And here's a guy trying to like beat everyone off the airplane. It's like, dude, it doesn't work like that. But people are doing it more and more. And then now we have a shove. Here's a guy trying to get on the plane. And this guy shoves this member of the family. And then they complain. And then the guy was thrown off the flight. Listen, cool. listen, Listen here. Uh, things got nasty when another passenger shoved her. When my sister went to scan her boarding pass, a man behind her said, you shouldn't be here. I have priority. She applied with, you know, it pays to be kind sometimes. The man said, how's this for being kind? And then bumps into her, <gasps> knocked, knocks her off balance. Not cool. This man was about three times the size of my sister. She told us what happened once we got to our seats since... She was behind us, so we didn't see this uh, as it happened. She swapped seats with her husband so she wouldn't be in the aisle while that man walked past. A flight attendant asked for details of what happened and whether she felt safe on the airplane with that man. The crew member conferred with the pilots, and then the gate agent approached the man a few rows behind us and told him that he could either get off the plane or they would make him get off the plane. Yeah, I mean, the choice is simple. Do it the hard way or the easy way. And he walked off the plane. Yeah, shoving, pushing. I mean, anything that is deemed even remotely out of the ordinary regarding an aircraft could get you kicked off. You don't mess around with any of this stuff. But shoving is not a good idea. Trying to... Get ahead of another passenger thinking, what, you're entitled? You know, I, I, I have priority. You don't. I mean, first of all, how does the person know that? I don't, but then to shove somebody, who would do that? Yeah, you don't lay hands on people. If you do anything that is deemed out of line, they could throw you off that airplane. You got to be somewhere, whoop, maybe not so fast. Maybe you're not going anywhere. Like this guy... That was told, get off the plane or we'll have you removed off the plane. How about that? Yikes. Just a just little, little note to implant in your head next time you're flying and you might want to be just a little rude or nasty or have an altercation or push somebody. Uh, you might have your flight ruined because they might eject you. Yeah, Fester, you sent me this story from uh, Venice. I think you said, hey... Most Florida story ever. Well, we got we got tons of stories that are most Florida stories ever. But there's a huge gator that smashed with this lady's door and just walking around her kitchen in Venice. Just right in the middle of her house. Yeah. Damn. Mary Hollenbeck. Ain't no Hollenbeck, girl. Ain't no Hollenbeck, girl. <laughs> she ain't, no. Oh ain't no Hollenbeck, girl. Is that Gwen Stefani? <laughs> That's so sad. It's... <laughs> Look at the size of this gator. Yeah, that's a big ass gator. Yeah, a uh, Hollenbeck, not Hollerback, but it's H O L L E N. I wonder if people that are named Hollenbeck, I wonder if they've ever heard that before. Yeah, oh, they yeah, hate their the lives time. now. I ain't no Hollenbeck, girl. Ain't no Hollenbeck. What do you think? I think you should stop doing this. <laughs> so, Mary Hollenbeck was just chilling out in her home on Sunday down in Venice. When the front door starts rattling, she thought it was an intruder. Yeah. 
The gator looks so comfortable just mm-hmm. sitting there in the little runner carpet. She lives in uh, beautiful Grand Palm down in Venice. My Aunt Mildred lived there. Mm. Uh, she saw an eight-foot gator had busted through her screen door, just chilling in the kitchen, just making its way toward the fridge. Yeah, looking for something to eat, maybe? <laughs> well, you say busted through the front door, like like Fed agents busting through Diddy's house. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, it, this was Diddy's other home, and this was a, <laughs> was a Homeland Security alligator. Yeah, coming in on a big sex trafficking investigation. Everybody put your hands up. <laughs> I like alligator voice. I would grab my gun, but my arms are too little. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't get my gun. I have alligator arms. I can't reach my holster. And I can't put handcuffs on you either. <laughs> can't yeah. pay for the meal either. <laughs> yeah, this woman says she's just sitting in her home. Sunday afternoon, watching TV. That's awful. And then her front door rattles, then the gator smashes through the screen door. And before she knew it, gator's just walking down the hall, and it's pictured in the kitchen. So, uh, you know, she calls 911. Looks like some kind of wildlife guy came out to capture it. She she grabbed her phone and got out of the house. Yeah, after she snapped half a dozen pictures. Look, she should have a dog or something. We've traced the alligator. It's coming from inside the house. So she gets out on the lanai, calls 911, uh, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. They responded very quickly. Then uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife, they show up, Damn it. and they remove the gator. Not you guys again, son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, crap. Mm. Thought I was home free. <laughs> well, so- Eight-foot gator. Does she get dibs on like a belt or something? For real? Yeah, I, you know, I think they just they they use duct tape or they just tape the jaw shut. They they take the alligator, they put it in the back of the truck, right? Yeah. They, don't they just release it like in a yeah. local swamp or something? Yeah, that's what my uh, uncle told my cousins when the when they put their dog down. Oh, we took him out to a farm. No, oh man, that's, they put uh, him down. They well, what do you no, know? They, that's not true. They don't always put the gators down. Sometimes Best they relocate them. Spouting out lies. Listen, I bet you I'm not that far off. Yeah, let me see. I, you know what? Let me see if uh, there's any update on this thing. Oh, the gator has been moved to Astero. It's a lovely area. Yeah, the the gator was dropped off in the parking lot of the Hertz Arena in Astero. That's <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, it just missed the Cheap Trick concert on Saturday Ooh, night. Son of a bitch. I love those guys. <laughs> I want you to want to <laughs> like me. <laughs> Can I get Surrender? Surrender. 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 Hurts my voice. Gator's going to be doing. All right. Yeah, what else do we have? I don't think this. I don't know how this is possible. I, I saw this, and it's not often that I do a Canadian story. I mean, listen, there's enough uh, you know, crazy. Hey, hey, we have Canadians down oh, we here. Do. Oh, yeah, Listeners, yeah, yeah. What, hey, someone I know knows you, met you in, from Canada. Oh, yeah, uh, RJ, right? You've met oh, a yeah. Canadian? Listen, no, what I'm saying is, uh, listen, oh, I have nothing against, uh, you know, Canada and Canadian stories. Yeah, I have nothing for uh, them either. I, I'm just <laughs> saying that we generally have enough domestic stuff to right. deal with. That's all I'm saying. I got you. But I saw this last night, and it's uh, a Canadian grandmother <laughs> has broken a new Guinness world record. I'm like, come on. Is this possible? She held a plank, you know, the workout plank where you mm-hmm. put your... Yeah. Legs out. Those are not and, easy. You know, you put your uh, elbows down, and then you just lay stiff as a board, you know, uh, off the ground. It's a plank. I think most people know what a plank. Do you know how long she did the plank for? Mm. The whole episode of Matt Lock. <laughs> how long? What, like seven hours? I, Daviana can plank for a long time, so. She's... Uh, Four. It's not, I know. It's not seven hours, Froggy, but it's not far off. Donna Jean Wild. Donna Jean. Not wilder like Roxanne, but Donna Jean Wild is a 58-year-old mother. She's not old. And a grandmother. She's got five kids and 12 grandchildren. Jeez. She's from Alberta, Canada, and she held a plank verified by the Guinness Book of World Records. She held the plank for four hours, 30 minutes. Wow. Did she? What did she do? What, did she watch, like, binge on Netflix while she did it? Like, what? She had to have done something. Yeah, uh, something yeah, to entertain yeah, yeah, yourself. Yeah, yeah. It was murder, she wrote. Oh, 
So many you give yeah. five episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Shh. This is the one where Angela busts the crooks. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. that, listen, how do you hold a plank for four and a half hours? Let's let's try to do a plank holding contest in here. I'll I'll plank someone. Okay, you don't. Whoa, you don't. Whoa, it's not whoa. something you do to somebody. Else. I, I tell you what, this show is. <laughs> plank you, dude. Th- th- this show is four hours. You think you can hold a plank for? Tell you what, tomorrow morning, why don't no. you? Why don't we start off at six o'clock with you? Let's see how long. You know what? I, We're doing it. I don't, do- no, 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 no. Uh, I don't even think I'm a good planker. I don't even think I'm any good. I just, was, I just uh, want to yeah, go up against someone no in this room. Planks. You, you <laughs> open your mouth. You said no planks? No plank no, you. No plank you. Go plank yourself. It's like huh? when I tried to do the yeah. show upside down, and I regretted it after like two minutes. Yeah. You did? I did the show hanging upside down. Well, it was when Chris Angel did his upside down stuff. Right, I'm telling you right now that you're going to you're gonna plank. We're, we're going to see how long you can plank tomorrow. Do I have to do, like, I, I put two arms on this and put my feet back there on I, the I, ledge? I, why don't you, you look up what here. a plank is before you volunteer <laughs> for it? Oh, you know what I th- I'm thinking of? It's like a push-up I'm, on your I'm forearms. I'm confusing it with parkour. What the- <laughs> oh, where you jump from like item to item and everything? Parkour, All right. parkour. All right. Froggy, I'm very, very disappointed in you. This is the final thing on today's show. I'm very disappointed in Froggy that Froggy has not brought this up because usually Bigfoot, uh, any kind of alien crap you bring. Dude, I saw a killer video of Bigfoot the other day. I think, uh, it's, I no, think it's real. No, I'm not talking about Bigfoot. That's what. I am very disappointed that you didn't bring up the story that came out yesterday about NASA capturing an image of a surfboard-like item orbiting the moon. Whoa, Silver Surfer? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, listen, I'm uh, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the LRO, uh, captured a thin horizontal line, the object resembling uh, the board of Marvel Silver Surfer character. What? And, seriously, and it's it's like orbiting the moon. Wow, I'm a, telling you, man. A Silver Surfer-like object orbiting the moon. NASA uh, released the picture, and it's happening. Yep. It's all happening. But guess what? It is not from a comic book. It is not a UFO. It belongs to South Korea, apparently. What? Uh, yep. The LRO captured images of its Korean counterpart. Yeah, the Denuri Lunar Orbiter, but it, it looks really cool, so it's not like some You alien. hoodwinked me. Not, I'm just telling you. It wasn't an alien uh, craft or anything, but I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't bring this up. All right, folks, have a fantastic day. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another exciting episode of the MJ Morning Show on Q105. You need to email me. I'm MJ at MJMorningShow.com. That's MJ at MJMorningShow.com. My Instagram, if you want to see the controversial picture of Michelle's hand on my thigh, not something else, it is during the eclipse yesterday. It is on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. So take a look, leave a comment, but it's not what you think it is. And we'll see you tomorrow, and let's be careful out there.